Time for Twig This Week in Google. Uh, Gina has the week off. Jeff Jarvis is here along with Kevin Marks. We're going to talk a little bit about the indie web and a new blogging platform that allows you to own your content but share it with the world. We also have uh, some updates on the Apple Watch, the uh, Moto X, and a, a look at an interesting round wristwatch, the 360s here. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 266, recorded September 10th, 2014. The Indie Web. This Week in Google is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great-tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine. Start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like... Dark cocoa almonds. Wow. To get your free NatureBox sampler, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting caspersleep.com slash twig and entering the promo code TWIG. And by Shutterstock.com. With over 40 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 20% off image subscription packages on new accounts, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code TWIG914. It's time for Twig! This week in Google, Gina Trapani has the day off, but Jeff Jarvis is here from his... Oh, he already opened it. You you were going to do an unboxing. I see it on your wrist. Oh, just, what no, is no, that? No, that's my LG. Oh, there's your LG. Okay, well, he's got... Oh, I got it ready. I got the scissors ready. I got everything ready. <laughs> Jeff's going to do an unboxing in a moment of something. We don't know what, but actually we do know exactly what. But uh, I hope so anyway. Won't be surprising if it's something else. Uh... <laughs> I hope, it, I hope it's not some sexual toy. Well, I was no just thinking it could be the Vibe Ease digital well, uh, internet vibrator, and then we're in the trouble. The kind of <laughs> trolls you have, somebody could have ordered it for You me. never know. <laughs> you never know. I have my Android version, but the iPhone version hasn't come yet. Uh, this Oh, I hear the, I hear the, the, the gentle uh, Oxonian laughter of Mr. Kevin Marks. <laughs> oh, so, Cantabrigian. Sorry. I'm sorry, Cantabrigian. He's not an Oxonian. Never make that mistake. Good to have you once again, Kevin. Kevin is uh, a kind of uh, the uh, one of the spearheads behind the indie web movement. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that, yes. Uh, we talked it, about it a little bit before, but it, I think going in depth is going to be fun with you. Yeah, and I've been playing with it. So oh, uh, we should also uh, welcome then uh, our indie web uh, guests from f formerly known as IDNO. It's now called Known. That's ben right. Word Muller and uh, Aaron Joe Ritchie. Uh, hi. hi, good to see you. Your company is called Known? Yes. And the website is with Known. That's right. K-N-O-W-N. And I've been playing with with Known. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, am, am a quite a fan. So uh, let's do the unboxing. Uh, by, and by the way, uh, please, Ben and Aaron, just jump right in. And you, you're, you're now guests, not guests in the sense that we're you're going to interview you. You're a part of the show. You're a panelist on the show. So awesome. Awesome. <laughs> participate as you wish. Uh, Jeff has a box. He has a box cutter. And he is about to unveil Ouch. <laughs> a paper cut. No, uh, something very exciting, I, th I think. No, packing material. <laughs> yes, it's a round box, ladies and gentlemen. And inside the round box, uh, a little black watch. So this was... Jason, the uh, reason I kind of knew what it was, because Jason Howell got his, too. You guys went to Google I.O., and at Google I.O., you got to choose between the LG and the Samsung watches, and then we're told that uh, down the road that sometime you'd get a Moto 360, and there it is. There it is. From Motorola. It off? It's kind of funny because you feel like all of these watch companies need to get it in before Apple announced yeah. their watch. Then now that I've seen the Apple Watch, which, by the way, the name of the Apple Watch is Watch. <laughs> uh, now that I've seen the Apple Watch, yep, pretty. 
You're gonna. It takes a little time to set it up. Mine was not fully charged out of the box, so I had to plug it in. Let me show you the charger though while you're unboxing yours. Um, and again, this is this is Jason's. So first of all, it's the first uh, smartwatch, Android Wear watch that actually looks like a watch with a round face. A lot of people have complained about the uh, uh, the round face because it's the flat tire at the bottom. But you know, you don't, especially with a black typeface, you don't you don't see that. If you if you tap the watch, you can see it when you. There's, it's not too bad. That doesn't bother me. The bigger question on this is going to be, oh, and, and by the way, I'm dictating to it right now. The bigger question <laughs> on this is going to be uh, battery life and uh, responsiveness. I fix it, tore it down, and they say it's a four-year-old uh, TI OMAP uh, system on a chip, a very old one, not a particularly low-power one, and that battery life on this watch, some have complained, The Verge said was not even a full day. Andy Anakos had his for a little bit longer. And he says he's getting about 19 hours. We'll see. That'll be the most interesting thing. But I do like the way you you charge it. It comes with this uh, dock. You know, the uh, the others, uh, the Samsung and the LG have, have kind of a flat thing. You snap it into with pogo pins and it charges. This is an inductive wireless charger. And it sits right here in the wireless charger, uh, presumably on your bedside. And then it does rotate. Oh, it's not plugged in, so it's not going to do it. But when it's plugged in, it will rotate and show you the time. Uh, sideways, cool. so that's good. so it's nice. That's little, nice. It becomes a bedside clock. There's the two together. There's Jeff. Yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna watch his all the way up his arm. Yeah, I should I should go out, I should go out the street this way. But you saw something right there that the um, the Moto X fades out to save battery fades out five seconds after you flip it up. The uh, LG, which are you wearing the LG or the Samsung? I'm wearing the LG. The LG, which I have also, stays on. It dims, but it stays on. And gets a full day, and I, th I think this is maybe because of the of the battery weakness on this watch that, that it, it it turns itself off. I also off. want to say I was at um, I just got back from IFA in Berlin. I was speaking at IFA Plus, which was a, a good event, Fun. first time they've had uh, talks and stuff. And I went up and saw the LG. Uh, there's another LG round watch. That's pretty. The R, which is really nice, and it has the thing. I, Leo and I can't remember what you call it, but like a diver's watch round thing, and that hides the 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 the, the mechanics that are in the flat tire let's ask the cantor uh, bridge nice. maybe he'll know <laughs> i a bezel i think but no, I don't know. is it a bezel <laughs> what is it it's a i i would have to ask my wife because she's the one who's actually worked <laughs> as a jeweler so, so she would be able oh, to she would know technical oh terms of watches. Yeah. um yeah it looks pretty nice i have to say it does it does is it a tachymeter? That's what Joel says, but I don't know. That sounds that sounds right. Tachymeter. Cumber, tachy if it's the tachy if it's the calculator thing, the anatomy oh, of so. watch. Of course, Chad has a an illustration. What is the ring? It's the it does say it bezel. bezel. The bezel ben, or dial lying, ring bezel. or the dial ring. I think the well, dial it, ring is on the face itself. Yeah, the dial ring is the numbers. That's the bezel. It's the bezel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Try to read whatever time points to Cambridge. The bezel <laughs> fixed or rotating. You need directional rotating bezel. Huh? Huh? Now why? Why does it rotate? What do you do with it? I've never Diving and timing functions. Yeah, some watches the uh, they're for pilots. You can calculate how much gas you'll have left. Oh, I'll do that. It's well. a so it's kind of almost like a slide rule. It's a calculating thing. Although if it's just timing, then it, you would just put you know. But anyway, oh, that's ridiculous. We've spent way too much time on something completely yes. irrelevant. <laughs> and this is my problem with watch, the whole watch conversation anyway. The smartphone meant people could finally get rid of that thing on their wrist. And now manufacturers are trying to put it back on our wrists. And we say, no. I think a great tweet I saw yesterday said, that, well, now the device I no longer use to tell what time it is is tied to the device I no longer <laughs> use to call people with. <laughs> I'm sorry yes. I can't give credit where it was due, but it was right. All right. Yes. So we'll have uh, next week. We'll have a. Uh, you know, it's funny because I took it out and I and I said, "Wow, that's pretty." And I immediately ordered one. It's two to three weeks back ordered now, which is better than it was. You can actually order well, that's it at play.google.com. Because I, I was thinking that you know Apple pre-announcing this would basically tank every or Motorola and everyone else's sales of watches over Christmas because everyone would be waiting for the Apple one. But maybe the other way around. It, I think now that they've seen the say, Apple oh, one, I can't get the Apple one, but I can get one of yeah. these. Oh, and Apple, in a way, that does, doesn't it? It validates the category. So, okay. And I won't be able to get it till some unknown time in 2015. So, and I think the <laughs> Apple one looks like such a Rube Goldberg. It looks like a, 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 a metal pillow on your wrist with, with a button and a dial. It's like, 
I yeah, th- why have the uh, uh, the buttonless company has the not button? I think yeah. Apple, uh, contrary to what we were all hoping, which is that Apple would solve this wearable conundrum, uh, Apple's gone the opposite direction. They have little icons on the screen. They're tiny. Looks like you've got a honeycomb on your screen. You're supposed to navigate that? Yeah, I, I don't want a navigable watch. The watch is there to give me alerts that are supplementary to my phone. And I find that all the time. I, I was sitting someplace and I needed to get a hold of somebody and I saw the SMS come in on my on my watch. Look, at, this, look at that interface. That's crazy. And then... Uh, after everybody kind of wild, widely agrees around is the way to go. It's why the Moto 360 sold out so fast. It's what LG is doing with the R. Apple's declared, no, no, you know what? A rounded pillow-shaped rectangle. That's what you really want. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you can, you can draw pictures and send it to somebody else on your watch. You can tap it, send strange emoticons. I think, I, you know, after thinking about this for a little bit, this watch is designed for Japanese schoolgirls. <laughs> this is the this is the this is a watch. I swear to God. Oh, I don't want a functionality in the watch. Oh, this is good thumbnails of your picture, the size of a. Uh, it's only three twenty by three twenty. This is not like they said retina, but come on, it's three twenty by three twenty. It's not. <laughs> um, hey. Uh -oh. Hey. And just what I want, a map on my watch. I don't know. Uh, it has something they call taptic, not haptic, taptic feedback. Oh, look, you could set the date. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Atomic clocks, so you don't need to set the date. Well, then they made, the first thing they said is we consulted horological experts <laughs> to find out what people wanted with the watch, and this watch is set automatically to the atomic clock. I love atomic clocks. I do too, but you know what? Every smartwatch, that this is the feature. <laughs> That's the feature. So, well, Aaron, Joe, do you think this is it? This is the watch for you? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm wearing the basis watch together. I like the basis health watch. That's a health watch. Tracker data. Yeah. yeah. So, and I wear a whole bunch of devices. I could potentially see myself wearing two or three watches at once to test them out yeah. <laughs> if I had them. Yeah. Here's the well, thing, though. I mean, I'm constantly making fun of you because your watch uh, runs out of battery halfway through the workday. And, and <laughs> but so actually, my watch, the battery on this basis will last a couple of days before I have to charge yeah. it. I just forget to charge it. Um, well, that's to so. me, that's why any watch one day is all it needs is one day. You're going to charge it every night anyway, right? But I don't charge the bases at night because it has the sleep tracker data. So I wear it at oh. night. And unless I remember to take it off when I'm at my desk, not right. doing anything, and charge it, which I usually don't, then the battery dies. You can see the problem. You, you should try the, I think it's called Sleep at Android. Yeah, I love you that. you put the phone on your bed. But, but, but Jeff, you I can now use your watch too. for that. You do that too? I do that. I I have the, the, the iPhone app that I love. I've been using it for years. That and... A couple other things. So it's a little crowded in your bed is what you're saying there. <laughs> There's lots of sleep tracking things that I've experimented with. Here is, by the way, I just want to show you. So this is a nano watch. This is, a, this is the thing that started this whole silly category. It's an iPod Nano in a special band. Remember, it was a Kickstarter project. That made more sense in the end. This is exactly the same yeah. as everything else. In fact, it looks a lot like the new Apple it kind of looks nicer. And it holds your music. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Swipe. Swipe, <laughs> it's very much like uh, the other watches. Look at that. I don't want to stay on Apple for too long, Leo, but, I, but since I was traveling, I couldn't hear you on Sunday uh, or yesterday, whatever the hell it was. I'm, if it's Tuesday, I don't know where I am. What did you think of the rest of the phone announcements hey, and the payment? No, it's, an, it's a new iPhone. It's huge. It's really interesting. I think really the thing to take away from the Apple uh, announcement is this is Tim Cook's first... He's finally out from under the ghost of Steve Jobs. This is his first new product category. He announced two new product categories, uh, not just the Apple Watch, but also Apple Pay, which may be more significant. Um, as, as many Android fans pointed out, Apple announced nothing that hasn't been on Android for some time, in some cases for years. Um, but because it's Apple, you know, they, uh, they're, they're not, they don't need to hurry. And they can uh, spend some time and get it right. And I think the Apple Pay thing particularly uh, is going to bring some clout to the marketplace. And I do believe this is the beginning of the end of the credit card and of, uh, of cash. 
At long last. At long eh? last, yeah. Well, so, I'm not sure it's necessarily the end of cash, but I think it's, it is potentially the end of the credit card. Um, well, but the, but the, the interesting thing that, you know, I've been using you know, this, this phone to pay with for at least two years because um, that, that's when they started doing that. And the retail support in the U.S. has been really poor. Um, you know, I, I would spot a terminal and I'd pay with this and the, the, the um, shop customer would go, what just happened? Did you hack my terminal? Yeah. They don't like to it. them, it looked like I'd closed right. the transaction out by attacking it with my, with my phone, yeah. um, because they they hadn't you know they hadn't seen these things in action, even right. though it's been widespread in, in Japan and Europe for a while. Um, um, I think one of the things that the two things Apple brings two things to this. One is um, the mind share and marketing muscle, and the ability to persuade all the retailers to upgrade their terminals because all these high value shoppers will be will be demanding it. Um, so it's actually great for the people who are building retail terminals. But the other key thing that they've brought is the, the fingerprint ID. Because when you use the um, Android phone to pay, you basically have to tap your phone, unlock your phone, type in your Google Wallet PIN. So you're, you're, you're faffing about with the phone quite a lot before the um, transaction goes through. Whereas with the Apple one, because you can do that with one grab of the um, fingerprint ID thing and tap and then tap, um, they can make that very smooth. And that, that, is, that is a big difference in, in, in user experience at the, at the checkout, I think. Well, and timing is, it's funny, it's both good and bad. Of course, the timing's bad because... Apple's iCloud was hacked, and uh, to, to the great embarrassment of a lot of uh, celebrities. But uh, mm -hmm. good because of the uh, uh, recent hacks on Target and uh, Home Depot yep. are really making people very aware of the vulnerability of point of sale systems. And Apple's done yeah, it right. It's a single use. It's a single use system. number, uh, but both credit card and uh, confirming PIN, one time only, can't be reused. <laughs> And this is even more important. The retailer gets no personal information at all. Apple maintains that. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's to Apple's benefit. And, of course, you have to trust Apple uh, not if, on two levels. One, not to invade your privacy. And two, not to accidentally be hacked. But assuming you do all that, that's a, a far sight better than giving a credit card to a waiter who wanders off. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they don't do that, right, uh, Kevin? You. They actually bring a terminal to the table and show you swiping it. And you have chips. And all cards are supposed to have chips. And they have pins. Yeah. Yeah. This is better than that pin. even, though. This is a step beyond that. Yes. The, the target the, wouldn't the have pin. any information about you at all that it could be uh, could be hacked. Right. <clears throat> the, I mean, the difference between this and the, the iCloud hack is that um, money is fungible. So if they um, take your money by mistake, they can refund you. Whereas if they take your your naked pictures, they can't take, ever can't return give them back. that. Nope. So that so and and that that means that a lot of this you know OX is security blah 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 that's not really a benefit for you because the credit card companies are already liable for for doing things wrong and they will they can refund the money um, and that's why they ran the you know TV ads about identity theft. It's hard to take you seriously with a cat's <laughs> tail tickling your tail. <laughs> the cat is just, say hello. Hi. <laughs> no, I think so the, and, and 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 of course you know Google's you know start trying to do it has been doing this. But it doesn't have; it's too fragmented. It doesn't have the cloud. Apple does. Apple has the the market cloud yeah. to make this happen. So this is good for everybody because your Android well, phone will ask, also Leo, do it. But this is not an open system, right? I mean, this is the, the, this it won't is, do Apple, Apple Pay, Apple. but but this but it will do Tap to Pay, and I think Tap to no. Pay is here. Yeah, so it's it it takes on Tap to Pay, and it's not an Apple. All Apple is doing um, internally is 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 facilitating the merchant payment. You still have to use a, you have to sign up for as a payment as a merchant with a payment processor. Um, and they're just making the transaction happen. Right. So they're they're not um, they're not becoming the the middleman here. They're just becoming the the, the broker of the device effectively. Yeah. yeah. Now that may change. I mean, I suspect this is one of the things where they've um, like when they launched iTunes originally, they said, okay, we're going to digitize your industry, but we don't actually want any of the revenue. We just want to sell the gadgets. So they said to the music business, um, yeah. and they may change over time with the ability to spend money that you've got in your Apple account by you know. And putting money in, in, in that way. That, that's the bit that's, that's um, not clear yet. You know, that, that happens with the Google account. Um, you, can, you can put money into your Google account and spend that rather than actually using a credit card. Um, and it's not clear that, they, that that's possible with the Apple Pay thing yet. It seems like you, they're actually always brokering a credit card at the moment. Right. Anyway, there's not, I mean, if you want to know more, watch Mac Break Weekly and every other show this week. This yeah, is a thanks. Google show. Uh, but no, but I think, look, Google's in these spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the other thing that uh, is, uh, struck me last night is um, Apple was smart to delay because their watch can now build upon what they've learned 
and what we've learned mm -hmm. from previous yep. watches is and the and and by delaying they also avoid things like wearable glasses and so uh google takes some arrows in the back by being up front on these apple's content to sit back say good luck <laughs> Have fun over there. You know, I'm surprised. So, so, so glass just went for sale on play. Yeah. I'm actually surprised. I'm surprised it wasn't just killed. There's no market for that. I can't. I mean, no. but they probably have some in the warehouse. What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an embarrassing admission. Hey, I want to take a break for snacks. And then I know there are a lot of people from the indie web movement watching. Uh, and we've, we've got Ben and Aaron here. It's crazy to waste them. Well, let's talk. We want to talk a little bit about indie web. Kevin Marks can explain what that means. I've set up. Uh, known and I'll show uh, people my site and show you and 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 then I have some, a lot of questions for uh, Ben and Aaron. So we'll talk about the uh, indie web movement, uh, known formerly known as Idno, uh, and and Jeff's Jeff's already started on the snacks. What you know? Hey, can you wait for one second? I, I hope you brought enough for everyone, Jarvis. We're talking nature. <laughs> We're talking nature box snacks. Ben and Aaron are not We're sure. The what, how do we get some of this? <laughs> how do you get in on this? Is the question. <laughs> nature box are delicious, healthy snacks delivered straight to your door every month. Um, and when I say healthy, I mean it. These are nutritious, proved, never any trans fats, HFCs, uh, artificial color, artificial flavor. They're delicious snacks. Comes uh, comes about this time of the day for a lot of us. We just want to. Get a little something, and, and you don't want to go to that vending machine and buy that candy bar. It's wonderful if, if the office, and our office does, has Nature Box, and your home can too. Uh, what am I holding up here? PB and J granola, peanut butter granola with dried fruit. OMG. Pistachio power clusters. There are more than 100 different snacks from Nature Box. Praline pumpkin seeds. You can narrow it down by sweet, savory, or spicy. You can also. If you've got special dietary needs, specify vegan, uh, gluten-conscious, soy-free, uh, and a variety of other choices so you can get just what you want. But that first box is waiting for you absolutely free at naturebox.com slash twit. If you don't take advantage of this, you're nuts. Free snacks at naturebox.com slash twit. Give you an idea of what Nature Box would be like for you. Baked cheddar, potato fries, sriracha. Ooh, sriracha roasted cashews. Lone Star. I think I'm going to do the PP&J granola today. What are you eating, uh, Jeff? Looks like plantains. Yeah, I'm eating uh, South Pacific plantains. They have dried fruit. Salt. The best pineapple rings I've ever had in my life. They, they are very good. They are, we I, ordered I a box just of pineapple rings. We wow. like them so much. Every All the bags are resealable. Uh, which my favorite you... are the um, kettle corn. Uh, nuts. Oh, those are so good! Yeah, they're so good. I ate a bunch, old bag of those. Yeah. Ones. Thank anyway. you guys for saying. Hmm. Naturebox.com/slash twit to start your free trial today. Imagine snacks delivered to your door. What a world we live in. Let's talk indie. What is the indie web, Kevin Marks? You've been you've come on here several times and talked about it, but can you can you in a thumbnail describe it? I'll, I'll have a have a go at that. The basic idea is going back to the, the the thinking that started the web of people having their own websites and connecting between those um, rather than hosting everything on a site that belongs to a large company like Facebook or Twitter or even Google+. Plus. Um, and this is, is in, in, in a sense, it's going back to the, the, the blogging web that we remember from 10 years ago. Um, but it's also not pretending these... Um, sites don't exist, but working out how to incorporate them into, into this as well. So making sure that you can post things on your own site, but share them out through these social networks um, and um, connect things back and forth between the two. And it makes sense to me, you know, because, well, for a couple of things come strike me. First of all, everyone here has pumped content into Twitter to uh, the benefit of Ev Williams and company. Uh, mm -hmm. But that content is is theirs now, not ours. In fact, I had I have uh, this morning I made a request to download my tweets, and I'm still waiting for the email from Twitter. They own those. Same thing with and Facebook. Well, you own them. They, they actually they say you own them, but they host them. Twitter has got a fairly good terms of service on that. But the terms of service where it gets sticky is um, they don't want you posting to Twitter and to other things in parallel. They've got some some weirdness like that. So you you have to make sure you post to your site and copy to Twitter. Because um, if you if you try and do some of the other things, then then they will refuse your app, um, API. But I, but I also feel like um, they're silos. Ultimately, they're data silos. They're they they don't interconnect very well. 
you're you're giving people yeah. stuff they're storing whatever their nice terms of service are they rate limit access <laughs> you know they don't new new developers can't write third party apps google plus yeah. to this day doesn't have a right api they are read only uh yeah. facebook well, I don't even know what Facebook's policy is about your posts. Sure feels like they own them uh, and decide who sees them in, a, in right. a fairly draconian way. So obviously there's a better way. So uh, uh, Ben Wordmuller is uh, here uh, along uh, with Aaron, what, I'm sorry, Miller? Richie. Richie. Richie, I'm sorry. Uh, and they're the founders of a company called, well, it was IDNO initially, right? Is that IDNO? Uh, so Idno was the original name of the kind of open source software that became the core of, of Gnome. Got yeah. it. So Idno was open, and uh, was that your software, Ben? Or? Yeah, it was. Um, that's right. And so uh, I actually I started building it last year, and I brought it into the IndieWeb camp, which is a regular meeting, you know, of the IndieWeb community. And uh, Aaron and I started collaborating over that. Um, yeah, and Kevin told me about it this summer. In fact, we corresponded. Uh, at the time, you needed to use MongoDB, and so I said, <laughs> good, let me know when, when I can use it with MySQL. You can now. Uh, yes, that was actually one of the things that we found out early on through some user interviews um, when we were reaching out to people who had showed early interest in using the platform, and from talking to a lot of them, we found out that a lot of people really wanted to use it, but in order to make sure we had a product that was usable by the greatest number of people, it needed to be compatible with MySQL. Well, so and we also, switch. ironically, you've now, in a little bit, it, kind of contrary to the Indie Web Tenant, you have a hosted version at known at withknown.com. Yes, yeah, so we are launching our, we're launching the open <laughs> beta for the hosted version yeah. um, tomorrow. And Oh, neat. Yeah. So we're very excited to launch Leo. that. Well, What's that? go ahead, Jeff. It's not really contrary, unless you're being dogmatic. It's a, it's it's an optional. Well, service. somebody else is now hosting it. Yeah, so but but doing... it's, it's a choice you're making. Yeah. So, yeah, and it is all about choice, right? I mean, if you want to run known on your own server, you can absolutely grab our code and do that, and it's got all the same features. You've got lots of control. If you don't have the technical ability or you don't want to worry about running your own server you can run it on ours and you can move the site we're going to let you move the site so you can ah, you, know, ah, you can start it. off on our hosted version move to your own self-hosted version or go in the other direction that solves it totally. i think you have to have that kind of starter that starter solves pack. it yeah. yeah it was the same same with uh with uh, uh WordPress think up. and think up mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well and and by the way i mean i had an experience with uh, uh six apart i used to use TypePad, which was self-hosted and then they introduced a kind of an easy-to-use blogging platform called Vox. And I loved Vox, and I posted everything on Vox. Then they went out of business. I was able to get my content, but not my pictures, because they were all stored on Vox. And so now my blog, half of it, from th a three-year span, has no images, because the images oh. are gone. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have some experience with uh, uh, letting others host. And I really decided, I currently run a, a WordPress blog. Can't wait to replace it, because it's it's... The, the problem I have with WordPress is big, it's clunky, it does everything. And I don't need yeah. to do everything. What yeah. does, what is, so I'll show you um, my personal known, which is very straightforward, very simple. Here's the experience that you'll get as a user. Um, it reminds me a little of Tumblr. So you have status updates, blog style posts, photos, check-ins, bookmarks, and audio. You also have, which is kind of neat, it will, uh, you can tie it to... Let me see if I can find that. Uh, Twitter, settings. Facebook. Um, you, it uses SoundCloud. Um, and the, there are all these additional features for comics. <laughs> Let me enable comics, events. You've added some, Firefox and IndiePub. So is the idea you're going to have a whole variety of content forms? And then I, I'm just posting pictures and, and text and bookmarks. In fact, there's a little bookmarklet that you can click <laughs> that will create a bookmark lit status update. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the idea is that, you know, we shouldn't be limited to the kinds of content that you have on uh, Facebook and Twitter and so on. And, you know, those have sort of congealed around the same sort of, you know, you've got status updates, you've got longer posts, you've got photos, uh, you've got videos, and you've got events. And 
you know, although those are the common content types, part of control is, you know, controlling the form of what you post as well. So we want to play with that over time and let people play with that too. And so if you're from, if you're on the self-hosted, you're going to be able to get, you know, community content types. Uh, for the hosted, you know, we'll, we'll take some of those as well and incorporate them in over time. And the same goes for, you know, networks, what you syndicate to. So, you know, in the general case, yeah, you're, you're posting to your own site and you're syndicating to Twitter and Facebook. In education, you're posting to your own site and you're syndicating to Moodle, you know, uh, different, different demands, uh -huh. different, different uh, areas, you know, uh, have different uh, needs and it'll be able to deal with all of that. And because it's an open source, lightweight, extensible platform, it's been very easy for people to pick it up and start writing plugins for things that they want. So it's easy to get started and get up and running if there's if there's something that you want that isn't there. What form are these plugins uh, written in? So uh, the plugins are PHP and so, you know, we, we did that, um, you know, because it is incredibly widely installable. Uh, and so, you know, they're really simple. We had a guy uh, who picked up Known and 24 hours later, he'd written a WordPress plugin, which mm -hmm. is, you know, totally awesome. And then on top of that, um, because the indie web, you know, the, the technologies that the indie web community has created are so lightweight, really easy to use, you know, it, it's, it's actually pretty simple to put all this stuff together. So when you first look at it, uh, and I have showed it to some people, they said, well, that looks just like Tumblr. Or how is that different from another blogging platform? It's a lot like owning your own Tumblr in terms of the in terms of the interface, and I think that's uh, that's actually great. I, Tumblr did um, did a really good job. It's also the interoperability uh, with all the other services that you can use it as your exactly. I mean, pub yeah. publish once, write once, publish multiple times. It's funny right. because yeah. I I, I installed eight different kinds of Tumblog software before Tumblr came along, because the the idea of a Tumblog is predates Tumblr. Yeah, and um, most of them were open source. There's, you know, similar ideas. And I ended up using Tumblr because it was just so damn easy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Um, I've always played around with a lot of different open source uh, CMSs, blog platforms, Tumble platforms, all sorts of things in my own space. And that's one of the things that interested me in the indie web community because I had spent so much time fiddling around with these other open source platforms that other people built, but I didn't necessarily have the technical skills to build a platform on my own. Um, and when I met Ben, he was working on the Idno project, and we saw a lot of potential in using that platform. So we like, it's been really exciting. So I mean, if you can take the you know like Tumblr's interfaces, like the interfaces that are you see on the best of breed of the of the of the consumer web, but actually you know use that as a really easy to use way to get at all this extra syndication power, all of the indie web power. Uh, you know we see that as a pretty good way to go. The idea is to make it that simple. The reason that you picked Tumblr, the reason that you picked um, you know you use Twitter and so on, but uh, actually give you control, allow you to tweak it, allow you to to evolve your site over time. Uh, we think that's pretty powerful. What's your, I've got to ask you this since we have the conversation in San Francisco, what's the business model? So there's uh, there's a couple of different things. I mean, first of all, if you've got the technical ability, you can uh, just pick it up, run the core software on your own service. But we actually think that most people are going to use the uh, hosted solution. Mm -hmm. uh, most people aren't going to want to uh, worry about running their own server. So, you know, Pat, you can start using that for free, but you can actually, uh, we're going to be selling higher capacity subscriptions. Uh, we're also going to be selling um, support subscriptions for everybody. We're going to be selling customizations. And for people like universities that want to run it campus wide and for people who want to run it in the enterprise, uh, we're actually absolutely going to be selling those good, good um, licenses as well. Yeah, so we started with ask. higher education as our as our first market, and we just had a couple of uh, pilot classes um, with wow. the beginning of the fall semester who started up. All their students are creating websites on Known, and we've got a lot of people interested in, in working with us for the fall to get their students using the software. Cool. So did you, I got I to ask, this is very inside baseball, what did you have to ask? Did you drop this idea of going after journalists first? We so I'll, so I'll tell you what happened actually is we decided that because education was so uh, incredibly enthusiastic and we've been working with this guy uh, Jim Groom at the University of Mary Washington who's just absolutely a he's like an ed tech superhero the um, you know we started decided that that was going to be our first uh, market but. What's happened is actually really quickly journalists have been coming to us and, and seeing this and seeing the publish, uh, you know, what Tantec Chalet calls publish on your own site, syndicate elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, seen that model 
and um, you know they want us to integrate it with their ecosystems. What we're also finding is that a lot of the things we've talked about with journalists and people in the wider media industry are actually also things that are applicable um, to a lot of students and a lot of people in the education space. So working with these education pilots will give us the opportunity to roll out some of these features in conjunction with classes of students and um, eventually they'll also be well refined and applicable for people in journalism and media as well. So well, I'm just going to show you the uh, so people understand a little bit better about uh, what some of the features are. I, I'm now going to put a status update out um, uh, that Ben and, and Aaron are on the show and I'm going to click Twitter and Facebook too right now of the social networks I've uh, federated, although I presume there'll be more down the road. There is Flickr there will. And, and many other. Now when I publish, it's going to publish this status update not only to my known blog, but also to Twitter and Facebook. And I think it does a nice job, um, by the way, of handling the hashtags, uh, of making it native uh, on uh, native looking on those uh, platforms. If you watch, if you look at my Twitter feed, you'll see it's there. If you look at my Facebook feed, you'll see it's there. Although I often hear people say, you know, it's not right to do that. You should, uh, you should be posting natively on the platform that you're posting to. You should post natively on Twitter. You post natively on Facebook. Post the kind of posts that are right for those sites. Well, and by the way, we have to say there is no Google Plus because and there's there's the Twitter feed. Uh, and I think that looks good. That looks like a native post. So I, I mean the the thing about the argument about posting uh, differently to different networks is. I mean, that's right. I mean, you probably, a lot of people have different uh, communities on those different networks, but that's totally cool. I mean, you can write a post, uh, and this is true of any interweb platform, you can write a post uh, and just syndicate it to one of those networks and write another post and just syndicate it to another one of those networks. So I, I find myself posting a lot of photos that don't go to Twitter, for example, because not everybody wants to see uh, yet another cup of coffee on Twitter or anywhere, fair enough. But uh, I do inflict that on my people on Facebook, for example. Right. Somebody's Tantec is in the uh, chat room. Hi, Tantec. Hi, he Tantec. says uh, he's. Uh, I'm demonstrating posse. Yes. Yes. What, what is that? Publish on your own site, syndicate elsewhere. Love so that's, it. <laughs> that's that. Um, the, the other thing is, it depends on the post type. If you've got a status update, update like post, then that makes sense to replicate to Twitter as is. Right. If you've got a longer blog post, you do want to send um, a summary and, which would probably be the title of the post and a link to it to Twitter. And also on Facebook, when you do that. You want to send it in such a way that it shows up as, um, I, I can't remember what they call it, but they have a special post type for that that, sh that shows it like um, like a news article or something like that. So they, ha they, they have sort of moved from saying you should post everything in, in our form to saying actually we want Facebook to um, r reflect um, news stories and things like that. And they've, they've got a big chunk of guidance on their side about that. So part of the, part of the value of... Um, this is coming up with ways to, to replicate stuff into these sites in a way that it does look native and, and makes sense in, in it, that form, but also points back to the standalone version. So if you look at the, the Facebook replica replication of this, um, the link says see original to point back to, to, to the known version to, to make it clear that that is, that is the, the source of it. I think that does that here very nicely on Facebook, for instance, where uh, it, it, this is what the Facebook post looks like and it's got a nice little... You know, it tells you what Twit Live is, but it it sources it as from known right there. Uh, in fact, if I click known, I presume it's going to take me back to my uh, original post. Maybe not. No, it's going to take me to known. No, if you go go back at the bottom, it says see original, and that's the link. Ah, the okay. Yeah. I clicked the wrong link. All right, let's. Yeah. As usual, well, I've used Facebook incorrectly. Uh, and no, see original, and, and, right? There it and is. And actually, that link will will eventually post to your okay. post to your site. Now, if you self-host, what's going to happen is it'll say this was posted via you know Leo Laporte self-hosted no whatever you decide okay. to call that. And I'll, yeah, I'll name that. Mine yeah. come in as stream, so I've named um, mine stream, and so things that show up on Facebook right. come in as stream for me. I really like this idea. I uh, I'm a as after my experience with Vox, I'm a big believer in the idea that. All of your content should live on a site you control. I mean, I guess a hosted site is fine as long as you guys guarantee, A, you're not going to sell out to Facebook, and B, you're going to let me get my data out of it. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you do. do. <laughs> and, uh, or better yet, if you're, if you're savvy enough and you've got a server of your own, just host it on your own server is, is I think, the ideal way. But it also feels that's a little retro, isn't it? I mean, the web has moved far away from that concept. Has it? How would you mean? Well... That's not how people do it anymore. Do people even create their own blog websites anymore? Sure they do. No, your guys do. People you know. Your do. guys do. But Real people. 
I have a well, Facebook page. I'm on the web. I got a web page. It's called Facebook. I know, well, I know is, people, and I'm not sucking up to another sponsor here. Which, which or Squarespace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who use Squarespace? Squarespace, yeah. yeah. Well, Squarespace is better. Squarespace, that is your own site. Uh, right, it's your own site, but it's also easy and hosted. Right. And it's yeah. much like with Known. That's a site, and you can get your data out of exactly. it. You're not stuck yeah. in it. But I mean, that's not what most people do. Most people well, say, well, I have a Twitter page. I have a Facebook page. So most, most most WordPress is 20% of the web as, as well. You have to remember that. A big yeah. chunk of the web right. is hosted on WordPress. Um, so people are familiar with this idea. Why is this better than WordPress.com? Um, because it's, um, it's built on these indie web protocols, so it's designed to interoperate from the start. Um, you can make that work on WordPress, but you have to install a lot of plugins. So, so part of the point of this is that you, um, this is not meant to be a monolithic system that is just one code base. It's meant to be using a set of protocols that will interoperate whatever site you're running. Got it. So I've got a statically hosted site at kevinmarks.com as well as the known one up there. Um, I can interoperate back and forth with this by using these um, web mention protocols, by using um, the, the sort of marking up with microformats to, to point out that this is a reference to another site and so on. Um, and if you look, you know, if you look at the post you just made, Aaron Parecki posted a comment on that on his site. He's not using known; he's using his own software. Oh, wait a minute, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Um, so, so, so that so comments are federated too. Yes. Yeah. So, so exactly. if you look at the the comments, basically we post a comment on our own site, but that is federated back to you because we use um, what's called web mention to say ping your ping your site and say we've mentioned you. Here's here's the, the link, and you and your site fetches that link and adds it to the bottom. It's like trackback. It's like trackpad, but not ugly. <laughs> but it well, works. So, okay, I'm looking here. So, so this is really cool. So, uh, this is on on my on my known page now, and this comment here from Ben Roberts that was done from his site. Yes, that's right. That's click, neat. Click, click In fact, if I click his proof. name, will it pull me to that site? It will. the the uh, The comment lives on his own site. Uh, but it also now lives on your site. So if your site, for example, goes away for any reason, if you decided you don't want one anymore, he still has that conversation he had with you. Now, um, this is a little weird because it shows up as a post on his site, um, which is a little out of context. But that's probably how he set it up, right? That's right. part of the beauty of the indie web. Everyone gets, Everyone to, gets to do whatever they want. <laughs> for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, what we're trying to do is make that as easy as as, as easy as possible uh, for people to do. So, you know, if you are a developer, you can use the micro formats. You can use the, you know, you can build your own web mention client and so on. Uh, what we do is is you know try try and make that uh, as simple as possible. I think it's not quite right that as well that it's uh, sort of a prettier trackback. Uh, I think there's a lot more that's possible with it. You can RSVP to events. You can, uh, you know, the social actions that you're used to on sites like Twitter and Facebook are, uh, are possible with this technology. Mm -hmm. And so it is actually, and, you know, there are a lot of reasons why uh, there are better, you know, ways to frame this, but it is the framework for a more decentralized uh, social web. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron the, has a similar... Uh, track back, but there's more context uh, on his page. So that's up. It's up to them. These are all yes. indie web people who are watching today. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, somebody's already asked, well, how do I install this? Do they go to the IDNO GitHub? Where do they get known? So tomorrow uh, on our website, withknown.com, you can be able to just download the installer. Uh, so that's something that uh, that is going to be available. Uh, we're actually part of an accelerator called uh, Matter. Our uh, demo day is tomorrow morning, and oh uh, in conjunction with that, we're going to be we're going to be releasing both uh, the hosted beta and the installable data, uh, beta um, then. And in fact, you sent me that tarball last night, and uh, uh, I have some configuration stuff to do to my site, mostly because I, I long ago gave over all control of it to an administrator. But uh, <laughs> once I get uh, once I get Bear to give me permission to modify my site again. I'll have that running, and I'll probably just now. Uh, what about the content I've posted on with known? Can I easily move that to my? Yeah. So what we're going to do is, uh, as, you know, as time goes on, you know, the ambition is basically to give you a button uh, mm -hmm. to allow you to do that. Uh, because we're in beta, it's uh, a little bit more complicated than that, but it's something that you know will help anybody who wants to do it uh, to do. Um, so you're not you're not locked up in our service. And um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a really simple thing to and do. It, now, it, it requires a LAMP stack, right? A, a yes. Linux, PHP. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. 
Yes. HP 5.4 and above. 5.4, uh, okay. Yeah. And pretty that, typical, pretty common. Yes. That's exactly the point. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, you should be able to install it on anything that supports PHP and MySQL. And uh, right now, your social media connectors, and I'll show it right here, include Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Foursquare, and SoundCloud. That's a nice set. Uh, presumably ones you've coded yourself. People will be able to add more, and I'll see, will, I, will this list lengthen as time it goes will, by? It will lengthen. Yeah. A lot of people have asked us for LinkedIn, for example. Yeah. Uh, Google Plus, you know, you can't do it. There's no Google right Plus API. Price. What about companies well, like Google that say, uh-uh-uh? Well, what about the Google Plus pages, which have a bit more of an API? So that's okay. that's something that we're going to be uh, okay. thinking about as well. Uh, and, you know, if anybody um, from a network that is interested in, you know, allowing people from known to to post to it, you know, we're going to be working. We're going to be working with lots of lots of platforms. And for universities, that list would it would include the university's learning management system or any platform that the school wants to include there. Blackboard news, or news Moodle organizations. Moodle yes, or, it's the CMS. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm running Nginx on top of Apache, and it's working fine. Does it? Uh, does it? But it does require Apache. So you can. We have had users who have actually installed it on straight Nginx. There's a little bit. You've got to manually configure it, but uh, we've got some information up on our documentation page as well, and we'll be expanding that. Uh, this is very early days. You ever? It's free right now. You intend it to stay free? So yeah. Uh, you're always going to be able to take known and install it for free. But like I say, we're going to be selling support. We're going to be selling, uh, you know, higher capacity uh, hosted versions. And we're going to be selling, uh, you know, fully supported uh, site licenses as well. Mm -hmm. I'm replacing my too. blog platform with this as soon as I can. Because I just, I feel like it's simple, it's clean, it's elegant, and it encourages kind of this, I love federation. I don't know why, but just this idea that well, I have a central spot that's me. But uh, but I don't. That doesn't mean it's a silo. It's it integrates with everybody else. I really like that idea. Yeah, great yeah. job, guys. Yeah. Kevin, are there are there other Thank members you. of the indie web ecosystem that you want to list? Uh, other people doing things with the same? They're all in the chat room right holes? now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I put in a link to the um. So the best way to get in touch with the indie web um, is indiewebcamp.com. Um, that's that page lists um the events that we that we organize for this. And that has a prominent link to the IRC channel, which has people in it 24 hours a day talking about this stuff. Um, but it's also a wiki that has documentation about these different protocols and 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 what we thought about that, what we're thinking about them. And the assumption is we have to face meetings, we have discussions in IRC, and then we write that up on the wiki to document it iteratively. And in fact, there's a meetup tonight in San Francisco at Mozilla at um, 6:30. And there's also meetups in Portland and Chicago, I think. I'll have to actually look at the, the page to see exactly where they are. But um, And I to... believe the next big indie web camp is coming up in October in Cambridge. Cambridge, Cambridge Massachusetts. Wanna... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes um, lo just last weekend, there was indie web camp in Brighton, UK. Um, and quite a lot of, of new bits and pieces got put together there. There's some people have been, have been building a commenting system that would let you post the comment on your own site without leaving the site you're commenting on. Um, that, so that, so it, it involves some, some voodoo involving iframes and registering protocol handlers. But it means that you, you could click the comment button on your site, and I would post, write the comment there, and it would get posted to my site. So this that, that's, is, this that's, is just great. So the, the nice thing is, is that because we've been building in this, in this way, we've been trying very hard to make it so that it isn't um, just one code base, just a monolithic platform, but lots of people building the, the pieces independently themselves. And that acts as a natural check on this stuff getting too complicated. Because if more than one person has to implement it and they're doing it on their own sites, um, that stops us from going, oh, well, we could just add this and this and this and right. this. And going, well, yeah. what's the smallest thing that we could do to make this work? Um, and if you look at these protocols, they are very um, sort of neat in, in that way. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for building lots of tiny uh, prototypes. It's sort of, you know, it's what we do. Uh, all of the startups are mad to do. It's, uh, it, you know, it's what we try to make uh, part of our process. And it's definitely something the, the indie web community does very well as well. Um, it's a it, it's a great thing to do. I wanted to add, actually, you know, I said that tomorrow we're going to be announcing the the uh, beta service and the and the download. You know, if anybody does want to try uh, what we've done, which you know to emphasize is one uh, indie web indie web platform, but uh, you go to withknown.com/beta. Uh, you know, feel free to feel free to sign up for a free account. Great, withknown.com/beta. If you want to know more about the indie web, indiewebcamp.com, a people-focused alternative to the corporate web. Your content is yours. You're better connected. You are in control. 
Uh, this is uh, this is really the the how how it should be, how it's supposed to be. Doesn't it replace the corporate web. It's just a uh, we get to have our own little corner. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Aaron and Ben, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's wonderful. Good yeah. luck, and thank you for helping me uh, get mine set up. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> You've Can added, you know, home? since last yeah. night, you've added features. So I just went back there and I go, oh, there's, <laughs> there's theming. Oh, there, you know, so <laughs> it's getting so, prettier as I, as we speak. I so feel free to get in touch. I mean, we've got a little heart in the top right of yeah. uh, both the hosted and the self-hosted. And that's like literally, it's basically a way to, to email us. And we've been, you know, uh, talking to lots of people uh, over the last couple of days in particular. And yeah, I mean, we were really, really happy to help. Yeah. Neat. Uh, my site is uh, going to be there for a little while longer, but then I'm going to move it local, leoville.withknown.com, and then sign up for the beta at withknown.com slash beta so you can do it yourself. And again, it's hosted. You don't have to uh, be mucking around with your database unless you want to. I like to do that kind of thing. Bear said I could. He says you won't break anything because you're not attached to anything because we made sure that you were completely isolated <laughs> from the rest of the servers. <laughs> so have at it. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Yes, we got more to come. In fact, a very big change log. What are we going to do, uh, 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 Jeff? I, Gina's not here to do the change we, log. We blew it last time, fella. I don't think we should do the change log, but boy, there's some big changes with Google Voice and more. We'll talk about that as we continue. Yep. But first, let me talk about my mattress. You know, this show rapidly is becoming about my needs, my snacks, <laughs> my mattress. I got one for Henry, too. This is actually a great mattress for a kid going off to college. Henry, you know, uh, is out of the dorms now. He's in a, 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 a place with a bunch of other guys, and he has to get furniture. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do the whole mattress thing. Casper. We sent him a Casper mattress. It comes in a big box. Look, take a look. I have my Casper mattress. These are the most comfortable mattresses ever. This is a queen size, excuse me, a queen size mattress that comes in a box. Look at the size of this box. And you open it up. Now, they say open it up uh, near your bed. I didn't. I opened it up in the hall, front hall, <laughs> which probably wasn't a good idea. They're foam mattresses with memory foam on the top, and they are super comfortable. It's going to take a little getting used to if you're used to those mattresses with springs in it. There's no lumps. It just feels good. See, look at that. It's, it's opening up. Oh, it's firm but soft. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> when you have the pillow top. It gives you it 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 you, you it conforms to your body and yet there is the firm support that I need for my back. I, I just love my Casper mattress. Uh, Casper is a kind of a neat startup. They're slashing the cost of the typical fifteen hundred dollar mattress. They cut out the resellers in the showroom. You buy it directly. Now that I know that makes people nervous. They go, oh wait wait, but you get a hundred days to try it. Even Ozzy loves our Casper mattress. <laughs> That's lit and straky on my face, by the way. Even Lisa loves our Casper mattress. It is so comfortable. And because they don't have a showroom, they pass the savings on to you. You buy it online, completely risk-free, 100 days to decide whether you want to keep it. 100 days. And if you don't want it, don't worry. You don't have to put it back in the box. They'll send somebody to your house to get it. I was wondering, well, how do I get it back in that box? Once you take it out of the box, that's really a one-way trip. Statistically, lying on a bed in a showroom has no correlation, I can tell you right now, to what the experience is of sleeping on a mattress. Casper mattress is made in the USA, only $500 for a twin, $950 for a king, king, and uh, you're going to save $50 if you go to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R, sleep.com, slash twig, and using the promo code twig, they'll save you $50. And not only that, but for every $50 for every mattress that you buy, they will donate $50 to Child's Play, which is a great group that helps uh, needy and sick kids. CasperSleep.com slash twig. You'll know when you see that. What? I can't read it. It's too small. What, Chad? Just speak to me. Talk to me, Chad. Talk to me. CasperSleep.com slash twig. Using the author code TWIG. You'll save 50 bucks off. And they will send $50 to Child's Play. Um... I just, I, <laughs> in fact, I'm going to have some nature box on my Casper mattress and then my whole world will be complete. <laughs> so they said they send you one. You should get one, Jeff. Well, You'd love to get one. I mean, they just, they, they offered to send me one. You know who would like it? Nice. Jake would like it. Mm-hmm. 
Henry, I asked Henry because he was home uh, over the weekend. I said, did the mattress come? He said, yeah. I said, you, I wanted you to do a vine of you opening the mattress. He said, well, we didn't do that. But I said, do you like it? He says, I love it. And Henry's finicky. He would not, I get, so I got him a mattress uh, in my house when he was staying with me. And he says, I don't like it. He wouldn't sleep at my house. And he says, your mattress is just too hard. He loves <laughs> the Casper. So I get, that's why I got a Casper for our guest room. I got a Casper for Henry. We got Caspers everywhere. I wish I could take one with me to hotels. I would have oh. in Berlin. It was it was uh, plywood. The hotel mattress is the worst ever. They really are. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll shave with Harry's shave cream right, in my right. Casper mattress eating snacks from Nature Box. I, I use Harry's, too. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> We're rapidly becoming a lifestyle network. <laughs> that was <laughs> always, always kind of my goal, by the way. I didn't want to do technology ads because then with technology ads, there's a little bit of the, uh, the idea is, you know, there maybe is a conflict of interest because then you can't report on the company. But if it's Casper mattresses and Harry's shaving and well, nature box. technology is lifestyle. Way back when, when I worked with Condé Nast, when I was at the same company, yeah. um, uh, my proposal for what to do about Wired Magazine at the time was to make it a lifestyle magazine because that's what yeah. Condé does. There's, there's well, think about it. Lifestyle. This is what's happening with technology. It's no longer a niche, or as you would say, Kevin, you Canterburgians, niche. It is, I get criticism <laughs> all the time for saying niche. That's the American way to say it. We're in America, okay? You got a problem with that? <laughs> yeah, problem with that, dude. Uh, in the niche that we're uh, in, uh, it isn't a niche because it's, technology is now everywhere. Everybody uses it. It's a part of our lives. So how can you say this is a specialty? It's not. All right, moving on. I do love this. Uh, with no, are you, you are you using this at all, uh, Kevin, or do you have something else you want to do with the? I really like this known. We've lost Kevin. He doesn't. He's just looking. No. Oh. Oh, sorry. Henry, you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he went to sleep on the mattress commercial. I know what happened. Well, I was chatting to the chat room. Sorry. I love um, this known stuff. I really do. No, I think I think it's it's very good. I mean. I've I've been I've been doing indie web stuff on kevinmarks.com, but that was a statically hosted site, which means that I've got to do a lot of it by hand. Yeah. Um, so not all the pieces get get built as, as quickly because it's, I have to do it myself. And the the nice thing about known is it means a lot of these protocols are built for me by by Ben and by other people working the open yeah. source project. Yeah. Um, and it just makes this stuff this stuff work. I can't but do it. So, is it using uh, REST and uh, it's you know kind of AP, well known APIs or? Okay. Um, it's it's basically it's it's pretty they're pretty much all REST APIs. Um, there are some there's some subtleties that we could, we could probably go into another time if you if you want to have, bring people on about auth um, because there's this thing called indie auth that lets you authorize your own domain by using the logins from Twitter and Facebook and so on. Right. Um, which means that you can you can prove that it's your domain um, and that you can prove that you're connected through through another service. Um, so that that means that. If you use that, you can use that to authenticate posting um, to your own site from somebody else's site, for example. So there's there's a bunch of subtle stuff like that going on. But each of these pieces have been built um, as a standalone component and then wired together to build other things. So we have the idea of um, web mentions, which we, we discussed, which is if I link to you um, and then I look, look on your site for your web mention um, URL, um, and then I send a post to that saying, I just linked to you. Here's the URL of my post, um, and then you can go back and look at that post. And See, that's the that thing that puzzles me. Context. That seems complicated. This kind of federation. That's is that MicroPub and IndieAuth? Is that so? So the, 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 there's there's three or four different bits of this. this yeah. So IndieAuth is when you want to author authenticate that you own a site and and so that a service can post to it. MicroPub is an endpoint that lets you post to your own site, um, and uses IndieAuth to prove that it's you. Um, and then um, web mention is this, I've written a comment on your site and here's a link to it. Um, and each of these, um, you know, they're, they're all fairly straightforward services, but you can couple them together to, to do interesting things. And the nice thing is, be, is because we've, had, we've got multiple implementations of these by different people, we've been, um, we've been f several of which are open source, some of which aren't, um, some of which are services that, that other people run. There's a, there's a web mention service that I use on my static site that will detect web mentions and post them um, in line there. So if you go to um, kevinmarks.com and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's web mentions there, even though it's a static site, because I've got some JavaScript that's calling a, um, a service that someone else has written to absorb the web mentions and present them for me. So there's, 
there's the ability to do yes you see it down the bottom there those those web mentions and comments have been pulled in from um other people's sites because they've um because i've got a, a link in the head that points to a web mention service that, that runs on app engine um so there's a, there's a, there's the ability to, be, to build these components independently and plug them together into different sites um and wow. known is known is the sort of wraps up a, this set of protocols that we've developed collectively over three years or so in, in indie web and gives you a service that does that directly. Um, you know, there are WordPress plugins that will do it on WordPress as well. There's a, there's a set of, you know, well-known ways to do this so that other people can add these things. But the point is to make sure that they're, um, they're not monoliths. They're well-defined, um, point integrations that you can do incrementally. And each one that you do adds some value to your site. I, f I feel like this, um, is, really great and cool and i also wonder will anybody get it <laughs> um i think it was well one of the interesting things with this was um getting my son set up on this because they're, they're both off at university and they wanted places to, to post stuff and they had you know they're in some ways they're you know, the target that ben and erin were talking about for, for university students um and you know as with any user testing what asked the questions they asked were, were very interesting because their, their reaction was Oh, this can post to Facebook. I'm wary about things that post to Facebook because I've been bitten by those before. Right. Talk me through what this actually does. Oh, okay. It posts exactly what I say and does what I want. I can see where I might use that. Right. And then my, my elder son was like, oh, it posts to SoundCloud. That's really useful because I make mixes um, and I want to post those to SoundCloud. Right. But the problem is sometimes SoundCloud will take them down because of what he's mixed together. And so having a copy on his own site will be really nice for him. So there's, you know, there's a set of issues like that that... Um, the, the thing you said about losing the stuff you've had on, on, on some content silo, that's an experience more and more people have. There's, there's, you know, there's a running joke about it, um, about a wonderful thing just happened. We got bored and all your content's going away. Yeah. Um, it's happened again and again. And, and, and you know, Yahoo is a serial offender here. Um, Google does this too. Facebook does it too. Lots of, lots of the companies buy these, buy these little startups, shut them down and take their engineers and get them to work on their, their stuff instead. Yeah. Um, uh, or so Vox was a really experience. good experience. I, I loved Vox. It was kind of like it's, this. But because it wasn't open, uh, when Ben and Mina right. decided to shut it down, boom, I'm gone. My blog is gone. And all your URLs now go to some new sites. Yeah. Because yeah. they sold the domain as well. Yeah. Yes, that's right. They did, didn't they? <laughs> Come to think of it. They may have made more money from that. Well, actually, there's, that's, there's, there's a fun one there. Is, um, do you remember Upcoming? Upcoming.org? Yeah. Upcoming. Yeah, upcoming. So, so Upcoming had went through this process. Bought by it Yahoo. Was bought by Yahoo. Um, Yahoo decided to shut it down. But they, um, Andy Bao, who founded Upcoming, bought the domain back from Yahoo and is reviving it. I love so, that. So now, he does he up, have the old data? He has the old data, which he's getting <laughs> for the Internet Archive. Um, and he's setting up new data. He's, he's a bit busy because it's the XO conference this weekend. Right. Which is it also doesn't run, matter because so it's an invite. Have, it's an invite to, event to service. Upcoming yet. Yeah, it, so it, old invitations, who cares? But uh, still, that's great. Well, old events, old events are, are, are interesting. Yeah. Historically, you know, we organized a lot of events through Upcoming, and it, will be, it is nice to see those old events I there. guess so, yeah. Um, and what, you know, what I hope to do is... I showed you certainly some of the indie web events that we've posted on um, our sites here, and and the, that have the distributed RSVPs. So I send you, po I post an event on my site, um, you post an RSVP on your site, and that shows up on my site. Um, so that stuff would be great to integrate yes. into into upcoming. Yes. Um, we've already got gateways that bridge it over to Facebook, but it would be really nice to have something that does it natively. So th I'm hoping to. Um, <laughs> chat to Andy about that, but I suspect he's going to be a bit busy over the yeah, next, over yeah. this weekend. But that's, but your SoundCloud example was a really good one. I, I would love to post audio on SoundCloud. This is a better way to do it. If I do it in with known, uh, it posts to my blog. I can, I continue to own that wave file, but yep. it's then cross posted to SoundCloud where the audience uh, MP, is. MP3, I hope. Yes. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. I was afraid my sound was up. Jeffrey. Yeah, I, I think there's, I, I think those are still geeky concerns. I think, I think the two consumer, uh, abilities for this are one the convenience that i can i can choose let's imagine this is a mobile app to post whatever i want wherever i want it from one place yeah there's no yeah. mobile interface to this yet right no, that, uh, that's not true no no, no. no. there is a, mobile, there's a the mobile web thing, hang 
Sorry, there's a mobile web interface. There isn't a mobile app. Oh, all right, so I can use a browser. Because this, this, because it's been written by people who understand the web, yeah. um, you can just use a browser on Android, and that works pretty well. It's it works well for posting photos and posting text. Um, the web UI for posting um, MP3 files is a bit tricky because you have to have already recorded it. Um, there isn't a direct record button. Right, but you can you can but post the, that from the mobile. The second well. appeal. I think is 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 not so much that you're going to save it against a site going down because people are fickle. I don't think that's the big deal. But I think instead that you have your kind of portfolio place. This is my stuff. Yes. This is all my stuff in one place as a presentation of me. And that's going to require yes. some subtle, as you just pointed out, about having a comment there that's out of context. They're going to have to learn a lot of how to do that. But I think those two things together are consumer propositions. But but the yes. business irony here is that only works. It, in a sense, if it remains independent, if Facebook buys their butt, then you lose a lot of the benefits of it being in a indie anymore. Um, right. But if you can get some investment to make this big on consumer proposition and make it the interface to all the social networks and and the place to present my entire personality to the web, I think that has consumer. Well, ability. or even even more than that, if companies like Squarespace and WordPress see this, see the value in it, and decide to participate. Then yes. Squarespace could do that. You stay on your Squarespace site, but you are able to now be part of the federated uh, right. internet. Um, uh, that's even a better scenario. So yeah, so sure. you're right. Uh, I just launched this on uh, on Chrome on my uh, Android phone, and I logged in. So I get it's it, first of all, there's a very, it's totally mobile responsive, but I can now post. In fact, if I I think I could take a photo, we'll see uh, on my phone. Yeah, and uh, and post directly from my phone. Uh, to the indie web. Well, that is cool. Um, I like that. So this, so this post, this is going to post to not only to with known, but also I could post to Twitter, Facebook, and Flickr. Same photo. Love that. So you're right. Uh, in fact, this is also better, Kevin, isn't it? Because it's yeah. the web. The web is the web. It's not an app. Exactly. Yeah. And the the the, the challenge is making sure that it's um. You know, the, the, this stuff does integrate well on the web, and part of that is that not all of the web stuff is ready yet. Like the the, the web UI for recording sound is kind of broken right. on on the on the mobile thing. So part of what we're going to have to do is go and lobby the browser um, developers on iOS and Android to say, hey, you know that feature that's supposed to let you record and upload a file? How about you actually implement it rather than <laughs> pretending to implement it? <laughs> but but the, so that's why I want to throw some weight behind this. I think this is uh, and behind indie web because this I really believe like that I believe that this is this is important to the future of a free and open web. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for doing this and 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 I wish I had the coding skills to do this, but thanks to people like Ben and Aaron who do, we get the right. benefit of them. That's that's the, that is the value. Yeah. yeah. By the way, if you uh, go to uh, a lot of sites on the internet today, uh, there's an internet slowdown uh, going on. If you go to my site leoville.com, for instance. Uh, you'll see I do the, I chose to do the little tag in the upper right hand corner. It says protect Internet freedom, defend, defend net neutrality. If there were fast Internet slow lanes, you'd still be waiting for this site to pop up. And so you may see that all around the net today. See that chat in the upper right hand corner of uh, my site, protect Internet freedom. You can tell I haven't posted on my upper right hand corner. There, but do, but uh, <laughs> up, uh, uh, yeah, uh, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, you'll see the, a bigger one on a lot of sites. Um, I went to a site this morning that had a big banner, right? It covered the whole page of Takeover. Um, you know, what's unfortunate about protests, the, the SOPA protest going dark, everybody did it. But you can only go to the well so often, like once, wow. apparently. Right. Because <laughs> here we are. This is only the third time we've tried to do an Internet-wide protest, and nobody's doing it. <laughs> Oh. Well, I, th I think that the 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 threat is a little vaguer right, right now. Until I mean, it's, it's very. This is the right time to put pressure on the FCC. This is the right time to be heard as a community and an industry. Right. But the consumer threat isn't as uh, imminent. Um, it's not reached ISIS level yet. Right. Maybe that's it. Uh, this is. I remember now. It was Beer Advocate. So if you go, if you show my screen, up oh, too late. I'll do it again anyway. So it, it's doing a little bit of a bigger one. Um, and then it says, sign our letter to lawmakers. Tell lawmakers, protect, protect Internet freedom, defend net neutrality. And they make it very easy. Mm -hmm. So this, before you get to be your advocate, you get this big pop-up. 
But again, not you know, you see it on Reddit, you see it on a few sites, but it's not uh, not nearly as widespread. Um, here's the uh, see, I don't see it on. Oh, yeah, they do a little one on uh, on Reddit. It's over here in the right hand corner. Uh, all right, I think we've done our ND Web good deed for the day. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about something bad. A bad deed for the day. Are we worried about this? 4.39 million Gmail usernames and passwords published. Google says no evidence his system were compromised. I saw this last night. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. A Russian Bitcoin coin forum uh, says they have almost 5 million uh, passwords. Company says eh, it's not from a security breach. We have no evidence, Our Google says, we have no evidence our systems have been compromised, but whenever we become aware that accounts may have been, we take steps to help users secure those accounts. But if there are 5 million, how, how else would you get them? <sighs> That's so the lot. question is, are there really 5 million usernames and passwords or not? The forum, I downloaded it and my email was in there. Was it? Yep. And was the password correct? So the password was one that I had had about two years ago. Uh -huh. And I don't use it anymore, luckily. On Google? On Google. Yes. Huh. Uh, it's about four. That's what the next web million. is saying. A quick analysis of the text file shows it includes mainly English, Spanish, and Russian accounts, but it seems to combine older lists accumulated over a longer period of time. So it could be a link to hacks of sites unrelated to Gmail. Was it your Google a password only, Chad? Yeah, yeah it was only my... Was it, hadn't, you hadn't used it anywhere else. The site has you know, pulled the, the passwords luckily off. Luckily, I had semi good yeah. uh, password. This, this goes to the discussion about payments earlier. Can we not just assume now that there are going to be data breaches, full stop, and we have to have systems that operate with that, that makes that meaningless? Right. Well, it is going to get breached. That's it's one just, of the things just, Google yeah. said. If you have two factor, this is one another reason you should turn on two factor. Yeah. Because even if they got your password, it's not enough. Um. Does anybody read Russian? Google does. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here's an American flag. I'm showing the uh, site where you is, is, uh, is leaked.com. But let me click the American flag. And see if, it's, if it translates how, how into English. Yes. <laughs> I, think it's, I think you enter in your email here, and it will tell you if your email was in the database of uh, hacked emails. I believe that's, that's what it's going to do. It's pretty slow right now. Is leaked. Probably because I just gave out the address. Isleaked.com. Google says there wasn't a hack. I don't know what to make of that. If it, if it really was your Google password, Chad, obviously. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Google doesn't store them in the clear. They store them encrypted and sorted properly. So if they've got this, they've either done a decryption run on a password file or they fished it in some way or got you to enter it from somewhere else. Maybe they fished uh, it. Maybe it's phishing. Yeah, if Google's storing your passwords encrypted and salted. Yes, which Google is. Then there's, you know, so just to, uh, if you listen to security now, you know all this. But many, a surprisingly large number of sites just store your name and password in text. So if that data, that file, which is not necessarily visible in public, but if somebody could get into their systems and steal it, they'd have it. Uh, better is to use some sort of encryption technology, often as a hashing technology. And what they'll do is they'll hash it in a known way. And then when you log in, they'll hash what you offer in the same known way. And if the two hashes match, uh, then uh, that's the right password. That's a little bit better, but the problem with hashes is something called rainbow tables. It's possible if you can figure out how the hashing has been done uh, to create a table of possible uh, results and, in effect, a table of backward, backwards unhashed stuff. So there's an even better way to store hash passwords, and that's with SALT. Kevin, you better explain that. Um, so that means you, um, before the hash, you add something to the, the password so that it's, um, even if you reverse the hash, you, you still get some, some garbage that doesn't contain the, the password. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and sometimes they double or triple salt them. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's pretty effective. If you do that, it, yeah. It would it would be impractical for a hacker, even if he owned the database, to crack all the passwords in it. Right. Unfortunately, but people use bad it... passwords sometimes. And if you figure out one, like if, if okay, so here's what's happened in some cases. The, the hacker gets email, password, and password hint. And some people in their password hint will write password equals password. 
And then they look at the hash and they go, well, I know that hash equals password. And now they've got everybody who used the same crappy password. Yep. So that's another. So if you, But if you use a good, strong password and they're salting it and hashing it, you're probably all right. Yeah. So, and so Google does that. And absolutely. And and what's um, but what may this may be is it may be like the um, image leak. This may be um, a compilation that someone's put together over a long period of time um, and then has leaked it in one go. Yeah. So that the image leak last week was very much that it was it was a set of people who've been trading these things back and forth. Right. Um, and somebody in that group leaked a chunk of it. Um, and this this looks look looking at the reports of this. It's, it sounds like these are email addresses and passwords that have been fished or collected or used over a long period of time that the people in the chat room are saying, oh, yeah, there's, I've, it has some old password of mine in there. Um, so th th this may be some hacker's cache like that. Right. Google has rolled out uh, the long-awaited, uh, <laughs> terrifyingly anticipated integration between Hangouts and Voice. They haven't eliminated Voice yet. Um, Hangouts, but the good news is Hangouts can now make voice calls. Your voicemail can go into Hangouts. You need to get the latest Google Hangouts, and that's being rolled out slowly. I hadn't gotten it this morning, but I was able to find the APK. Uh, don't recommend people do that. Um, <laughs> but but I, I did it for you so I could talk about it, and it's pretty cool. I made a phone call. Uh, voice quality is quite good. As always with Google Voice, there's a slight bit of more latency than on a regular point-to-point -point phone call, uh, but I found it not bad at all. Uh, I, I use it. I use it. I tend to use it from the browser using the nice mic like I, like I have yes, here. Yes, I do all the time. So, yeah. so if I've got a long call to make, I'll do that. So yep. I, the, we had the Open Rights Group um, the advisory board meeting this morning, which is a call to the UK that lasts an hour and a half, and so I can sit there at the computer and, and have the conversation and, and do it this way, and it, it, it works quite well for that. Um, I haven't spent much time using Google Voice on the phone, but um, the value, again, there is when traveling, because it means that your number can, can replicate to somewhere where you have Wi-Fi and you can make calls. Yeah. So I've, I, I've, I've used it there when I've gone to the UK and my bank has done something stupid um, and I have to call their 800 number. So you can't call 800 numbers, US 8 numbers from the UK, but because my Google Voice number is an American number, I can call it from that. So there's, there's a set of um, like arbitraging around the brokenness of the phone system that, that Google Voice makes very useful. So it's nice to see that they're still supporting it and keeping that running. The downside on it is that Hangouts is becoming more and more of a beast. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, it was already too big for just using for SMSs, but now it's got to... But it's kind of cool because if you're... So I did, you know, there's a couple of reasons to use Hangouts. If you're using Android Wear device, Hangouts allows you to reply from your watch. Not all of the SMS apps let you do that. Evolve will do that. That's kind of nice. But also now when I choose a contact, I can choose whether I want to hang out them, SMS them, or call them. And that's kind of nice too. Much like Facebook Messenger. <laughs> yes. Actually, Facebook Messenger will do that too. Well, they've, they've had a, um, a call that is, that is a VoIP call. They have Skype. For a while. They own Skype. They are partnered with Skype. Oh, was, that, was it, was it mm -hmm, Skype? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so that's kind of nice. I mean... Uh, but uh, I'll use Hangouts, uh, I guess, for my SMS app until it finally. Uh, it, it's gets it's so it feels so big compared to just a plain old SMS app. There's so much stuff in there. Well, it's because they've got Hangouts on Air and all these other things in there. So right. I, I did a I did a Hangouts on Air with somebody last week, and it was it was like, wow, where did all this extra UX come from, and why right. is it so hard to use? Yeah, that's the uh, unfortunately that's the I, I on the other hand, I, on one hand I like adding all these new features. On the other hand, it's it's uh, it, I, I kind of like the Facebook model of separating everything out into single apps that do one thing well. The old Linux, old Unix uh, point of view. Right. Do one thing well and then pipe. Yeah. Well, that's, that's you're sounding like you're talking anywhere again. Um, that's <laughs> that's very, no, but that's I think the the separation there is um, I think the app separation is driven by notifications. Um, because and permissions, because the permissions, permissions yes. list gets really long. Right. So, but so Hangouts and Facebook Messenger have a similar set of permissions and sort of notification model. Um, whereas you don't want that. You wouldn't really want that wrapped up in your your Facebook app and your Google Plus app um, because they, you get a different set of notifications from them, and you have a different idea of what those are for. Because one is interpersonal communication, and one is publishing. The other thing that's nice is Hangouts now can do images. 
or uh, voice can now do images because the text messaging and voice was did not support S, uh, MMS. It was only SMS. Oh, oh so they fixed that. Oh, that's good. So now oh, that's new. I can send photos, locations, uh, rich uh, text messages uh, using Hangouts via SMS. I believe that's the case. That's yeah, because that was that was clunky before. If, yeah. if somebody sent you an image, it would. It would How would I know what I have in the United States? Uh, it's 2.3. Is that right? I think it's version 2.3, so you can look in Hangouts and see. You'll you'll right. it, the update started going out today. It'll be over the next few days. Um, if you look in Help and Feedback, uh, it's two point. My current version of Hangouts is 2.3.7506796. <laughs> Make sure you right. have that yeah. version. It's 2.3 or later, I think. All right. Uh, I had 2.2 this morning, and I actually found an, an, an APK somebody had posted on Google Plus and took a, did a very stupid thing, which was downloaded and installed it, um, which means now the NSA has everything in my phone. <laughs> wait till it, best thing to do, wait till Google pushes the update. You'll get it soon. Google is also putting a password generator, I think it's a good idea, a password generator in uh, Chrome. If you have Chrome Canary... Uh, you will have now, have now the ability to generate a password. This is actually, I think, coming from the Chromium project. Um, yeah, I think so. It's a good idea. It's a FIPS 181 compatible automated password generator. Spits out a strong and pronounceable password. You do have to use Canary and then enable a couple of flags. Uh, and this should replace. Then this would replace uh, one pass. You're saying no. Because it doesn't no. remember it. And I don't recommend... Uh, oh, I mean, it's just a generator? That's it's all a generator. Well, Google yeah. will remember passwords, but I don't... Well, I mean, Chrome, well, Chrome will remember will passwords. Remember it. Yeah. yeah, but I... Yeah. I'm not crazy about the idea of the browser remembering the password, frankly. I, I prefer to keep my passwords encrypted. It, it depends how, how they do it. Yeah, the value is that it lets you do it between machines. But, right. Yeah. Yes. It's a, you're making a, a convenience versus security trade-off there as ever. Right. So uh, I, I still suggest using LastPass, but at, hey, it's a step. It's a step forward. That's good. We're doing the change log just in case you didn't know. So we just didn't want to let anybody know. Because then they messed it up. Before. Compare it to Gina, who does it so well. <laughs> and finally, Google Play Music. Uh, I'm sorry, movies and TV on iOS lets you download and play videos offline. I don't think you can do it on Android, can you? I don't think so. Yes, but it, can you? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll try it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and now you time. can also do it on Chrome, so I can okay. do it on my Chromebook. Apparently, you could not do it on iOS. I didn't know that. Didn't either. So if you're an iOS user. And that's how I watch movies and shows on long flights, such as the one I just left. Okay, so yeah. So do you, is it like a pin, or is it actually say explicitly, download this movie? It's a little pin. You it's click a pin. on the pin. And it, okay. It's a music it's like to, play music pin, yeah. It's like music, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Love, I love Google yeah. Play Music, and I do do that for the trips. I download beautiful music to listen to. Google has unveiled the Cartographer. It's an indoor mapping backpack. Everybody ought to have one of these. Uh, where this... Every bit as useful as glass. <laughs> Only 10 times heavier. Did I say 10? A thousand times heavier. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You wear the backpack. You walk through the building. The floor plan automatically generated in real time. The wearer also uses a tablet to add points of interest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. It's now, isn't that the Leo? Is what, what, what's what's the what's the look Android, at this, Jed. The, the version of, of, of an Android tablet that, that map three D maps spaces. What's that called again? An Android tablet that three D maps spaces. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, chat room. Maybe he's feeling. Photo. Not you mean the software that did it, or there's there's a there's yeah, the a, project a uh, Tango. Yeah. Tango. Yes. Thank Jeff you. Needles Thank remembers you. Project Tango. Thank. Give you. that boy he a popsicle. That. Potentially do this. A tap the Project Tango tablet. Ah, that's neat. I don't remember. It I must have been a, a on vacation space. when they came out with this. Yeah, the idea is you have mapping devices that you can map the whole world. Everything should be mapped. Right. Okay. You sure Project Tango wasn't an April Fool's joke? No. No. There it is. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you sure it wasn't an April Fool's joke? <laughs> All right. Is it like an augmented reality kind of a thing? I don't know. No, it's a it, it, well, it's, it's to map inside of buildings. Okay. 
Well, this must yeah. replace yeah. Project Tango. Imagine how blind people could. could I think it's could working be. in conjunction with Project Tango. In, in the conjunction. Okay. All right. Well, they, yeah, they, they've got multiple ways of doing this. So they've they've had, you know, the Street View cars, and they had Street View bikes, and right. then they had Street View backpacks. Um, at one point, they had a service was part of Google Local where they'd come to your um, business and photograph it for you. Yeah, we, uh, third that. parties do that. We did that with yeah. our uh, with the Twit Studios. Yeah. You can if you search for Twit LLC on Google Maps, yeah. you can go inside and tour around. I like that actually. So, so this is all. I think this is these are all variations on a the theme of that. Of how do we get better indoor right. data inside? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know Google Maps has that for certain buildings. It has interior maps, um, things like that. But they obviously want walk through as well as as just mapping. Digitize the world. By the way, we were talking about hashes. There is an encryption technology, SHA-1, that is known bad. It's been cracked. It's not very, it works, but it's not very strong. Google has decided to remove support for certificates encrypted with SHA-1 from Chrome. Uh, this is really interesting. Google has seems to have decided that they can use their immense weight, their immense clout, mm -hmm to get people to do something that Google, in its infinite wisdom, thinks is right. Remember a couple of weeks ago, they said, you'll get a better search ranking if you are uh, using secure HTTP. Well, Google says most of the web is, is using an insecure algorithm. 90% of websites that use SSL use SHA-1 for their certificates. Uh, unfortunately, it's dangerously weak, has been for some time, gets weaker every year. There's a replacement, SHA-2. Google announced if you use Chrome, you're going to start seeing warnings for sites that say they're secure but aren't. The first set of warnings will hit before Christmas and will keep getting more stern. <laughs> Google's turning into like a, a headmaster or a vice principal or something. Yeah, the, 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 the geek marm. <laughs> you're not secure over the next six months. Eventually, even sites... With the SHA-1 certificates that are, don't expire till 2016, we'll be given a yellow card. <laughs> SHA <laughs> has got to go. What do you think, Kevin? I mean, on the one hand, I agree. I mean, people shouldn't be using this certificate. So this, I mean, this was a big thing at Indie Web Camp UK this weekend. Lots of people were working on how to get their sites up on SSL, um, on yeah, HTTPS, and, and make sure how to do that. And there's a series of sites that... Um, I've posted a, the IndieWebCamp.com slash SSL page, which talks about different levels of security and, and um, what you need to do and how you work your way through the levels. Um, and there are sites that will measure your, um, right. check your site for security. And so, so part of this is not using um, SHA-1, not using things that, that, that fail, not making... We may never know what he was about to oh. say. <laughs> and then sure can't aliens the took Kevin Rose <laughs> at 258. Kevin Rose? Kevin Marks. Oh. At <laughs> Who's Kevin Rose? I don't know. At uh, 258 on September Is that 10th. Is London time on your watch? Or, I don't know. Or, yes. At, well, London time, it's uh, 1058, just so you know. <laughs> All right. I, I think it is a little in school marmish, and yet it's a good thing. It is. Hey, it did is. you see the uh, reveal? We're going to get Kevin back. Did you see the reveal for the Moto X, the new Moto X? Uh, some of it. I, that was the other thing I wanted to ask you, just because I'm curious for your reaction, particularly as a Moto X lover. I want to buy it. I can't. Um, can't Andy and Akko went to Chicago, uh, and, uh, you know, so it was at their Chicago headquarters. We had talked about it. Motorola announced exactly what I had hoped they would announce, which is a high-res 1080p, larger screen, 5.2-inch, yep. Moto X with an improved camera. Andy says, yes, indeed, it's much improved, 13 megapixels. Um, and uh, it's everything I wanted. And it has more commands. It's smarter. Still has that always on. Yep. I, I love it. It, You know, one of the things that was always a little issue for me, it has that, uh, what do they call this? It? it would, it would uh, show little, in, you know, information. It would pulse information while it was off. Now right. you can wave your hand over it because they have infrared sensors and it'll go, oh, you want to know? Yeah, and it'll show you. I think they call that active display. Active display. You don't have to get it. <laughs> the problem with active displays, you'd have to look at exactly the right time. Oh, good. But now you can wave your hand and it'll say, oh, the time is, and you have well, three versus messages. Versus the OnePlus. I like the OnePlus. This feels very vanilla. The OnePlus. Yeah. 
It's a yeah, it's a great kind of vanilla yes. Android device. Really nice. Nothing wrong with it. The one thing I'm waiting for, I, I you your your love with the Moto X so, and, and the added commands, I'm lusting after it. But next Nexus, what's that gonna be? Is it gonna be what well, do we know? We keep hearing rumors. We also yeah. hear rumors that Mo, that uh, Google's not going to name it Nexus anything. Right. It's going to be just Nexus or something. Or they're going to keep five. I don't know. Um, you really love your Nexuses, don't you? I do. I do. They're very comfortable. They're vanilla, I too. Up, you know, I, I, when I was at IFA, uh, the, the IFA's amazing. Have you ever been to IFA? No. I'd love to go to IFA. It's the largest... Uh, consumer electronics show, I guess, anywhere. And, and, wow. and the reason I was there was to speak. They never had a program before. They just had the, the, oh, the, neat. the show. Oh, cool. So, but I went up and, and wandered as best my knee, my aging knees could take me through the show. And right above us in the, the city box uh, was the Samsung. And, and you know, just amazing stuff. Samsung has entire lines devoted to retail, hotels, yeah. restaurants, hospitals, airlines, schools, I mean, it's really quite amazing that they're looking at that as as companies that have service touches with public, they want to be there. And so they do some phenomenal things, and the refrigerators are great, and this and that. Why do they have to keep on ruining the phones with all the... God Garbage. Damn. Ah, that's the only thing that frustrates me about them, because they do need stuff. I touched the, the, the phone with the thing on the side. It's yeah, the not edge. quite as absurd as you think. Yeah. It's an, I feel like that's a very... It's innovative. It's an interesting idea. It really is. It yeah. really is. It kind of works, and you kind of roll it around, and I kind of like that. Uh, they have a gigantic watch. Ridiculous. It is like wearing yeah. an iPhone in your wrist. Uh, but but Samsung does some really, really neat stuff, and it's impressive. And, and um, Well, we know there's a new Nexus tablet. NVIDIA has confirmed that. It's going to be built by HTC. Uh, ah. So that 7 will be replaced by a 9. That is confirmed. That, well, NVIDIA says so. <laughs> Google has to say. And uh, I don't know. Is it eight inches? I think it's eight inches. I'm not sure. It's too it's, bad. I love seven. Seven was perfect. Yeah. Uh, but it's that new fast Tegra K1, um, which is a really nice processor. By the way, if you're going to get an iPhone, the reason to get the iPhone is this processor is just blazingly fast. If you like games on a, a five and a half inch, it'd be great. So the Tegra, that's the same chip that's going into the new Chromebooks, right? Yeah. Um, unless I've got this completely muddled, but I think so. And then there, so we know they're going to keep the Nexus name, which is is good. That means there probably will be a Nexus Six. Mm -hmm. uh, rumors say probably this year, but we don't know. Uh, maybe it will be time to uh, uh, coordinate with the release of L. Right. We don't know the time. Right. Yeah, my problem is I'm not you, so I would I would have you don't like changing your phones, do you? Well, that actually is a pain in the butt. But but besides that, it's also just kind of a money thing that after have, having just bought the One Plus, I can't really justify buying both the Moto X and the Nexus. Well, look at this. This is a, tw a tweet from the Android Twitter account of a Nexus no one's ever seen with almost an edge-to-edge -edge, uh, screen. Big phone. And it looks pretty big. Phone. I would guess that's five and a half. Um, I don't know. Could be a mock-up. We don't know. I saw the new Note 4 also. That's e big, isn't it? Well, no, that's a, it's the same size as this thing. I'll put this phone right over it, and it's the same. Really? But the screen's bigger. Much. The notes felt so huge. More, pix more pixels? Yeah, it's um, uh, 500. They're yeah. not getting to up to, I think, close to 500 PPI. It's nice. It's <laughs> nice. Um, hmm. The Nexus 6 would be five and a half inches, according to the rumor mill. Um. I don't know. Maybe larger. Maybe even larger. Thing is, it's all rumors. You don't know. And the X1 oh, is yeah. here. Well, it will be here sometime this month, they say. They. I also the like... Unknown. Oh, wait a minute. No, they did say a price. They did say the price, it's a, right? It's cheap. It? It's, uh, was it $550, $450? Five, 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 something like that, yeah. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not as expensive as you'd expect. <laughs> and you have the turbocharger, which is also nice. You know, all Qualcomm chips support this, and I think almost all... Uh, flagship models have have this high speed charging. I don't. It's, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not clear if they're talking about something different from the Qualcomm high speed charging. Got it. Uh, they're claiming you can half charge it in 15 minutes. If that that's pretty darn fast. That's By the way, the, 
the I think the HTC One has that in the Qualcomm 801, but you'd have to buy a higher power dongle for it. And you will also with this. Charging X. speed is the real issue. Did, did I, I agree. Did I, the show, did I say on the show how I drove the um, uh, BMW all electric car? Yeah, you said you liked it. Yeah, I did. I did talk about that, right? But it's 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 the speed of charging that's going right. to be the issue. It's not so much the capacity; it's how fast you can recover. Well, and, and, what, and to do it with a car, you have to put a 240 volt. Uh, that that so, too. Uh, now, what about the, the, here's my concern. Are, are, are the, the, the the Moto Hint, the little tiny. I want the Hint. Because that's Scarlett well, Johansson my in my ear. Oh, yeah, well. It looks ooh. just like the little earbud ooh. that he was wearing in her. But I have wacky ears. I could never wear Apple earbuds. Never, oh, never, well, never. It would just... probably fall right out. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. And, by the way, I don't think the battery life is going to be great on that. Because all they talk about is 10 hours with the included case that has a big battery in it. Yeah. You charge up, and I think it's, I'm guessing it's three hours battery life on the HIN. That's not a lot. You know, I don't go through battery on my headset a lot. I use it, leave it All in right. the car. If you think about it, it's so tiny. I just, I, I just, I really like the idea of a, of a Motorola ecosystem, and I wish the 360 had more Motorola specific stuff and the HIN and the, and the whole thing, and I'm going to be a Motorola cyborg, and I'm going to be talking to myself a lot. <laughs> And to the Chinese government. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I'm, in the, I'm in, the, in, the, in the annoying state of like, I need to buy a new phone, but I don't know which one to buy because they're all about to change. It's very confusing right now. And maybe I should just buy your OnePlus when you get bored of it. I'll too. sell you my OnePlus. Actually, I think <laughs> I think Father Robert wants it. We can get you a OnePlus uh, invite. We were saying when you were gone, this is, I like the OnePlus. It was very vanilla. It's not, there's nothing you go, oh, I love it. Or, oh, that's, that's, what I, that's what. Vanilla is what I want. I, you yeah. know, I don't want this, this Samsung, oh, we've, we've replaced all your apps with another app that's, that's almost the same, but not quite. Yeah, it's I, not I like, want no, the, it's very pure. I want a nice, clean, you know, yeah. I, I buy the Nexus phone. So if OnePlus is like a Nexus phone, then that's great. It's Well, it's Cyanogen mod. It's not pure yeah, but Google, it's, it's, but it's pretty it's pure. It's close enough. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, you'd like point, it. The point is, it's not the Samsung one is like, there's two apps for everything because they had to make their own version of, of all the Google ones. Right. Which is, which is just frustrating. Horrible. Horrible. Speaking of which, one phone I know you're not going to get the Amazon Fire phone. <laughs> They're pretty well, much never, giving it away. <laughs> what? I talked to a clerk at the AT and T store yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and I said, "Are those things selling?" He said, "No." And those that do sell, come back. Yeah, nobody wants that phone. Why? Because huh. they just don't do enough. If they, I, you know, they blew it. They should have just made it Android. I don't know why it's not Android. Make a pure Android phone. You can add all those little juicy Firefly and Mayday. Um, well, well, it maybe they don't want to pay the um, the with Google tax. It's not that expensive, is it? Mm. No. But it, but it would mean they couldn't use their app store at all because part of the with the with Google. You have is, the Play Store. You will use the Play Store, not 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 your app okay. store. And Amazon wants to use their app store. So well, guess what? It's, it's a it's a it's a mutual strategy tax problem. Right. right. People want the Google Store and the Google Apps and the Google Services. Uh, New York Times talking about talking to Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, AT and T stores. Salesman said the fire had performed dismally. Quote: We got special shirts staffed up for the staffed up for the launch. Then ah. nothing. He said we sold a total of ten. Fires at a smaller store. Two salesmen said they'd sold one fire. Gene Munster, an analyst at Piper Jaffray, said, "Well, we had modest expectations, and the phone seems <laughs> to be shy even of those." Ninety-nine cents now for a fire phone, and I and I, I wouldn't even get it at that price. No, because you're still committed to two free contracts. Contract. Yeah. Stupid. And it's AT and T only. They spent a lot of money on that ad, a silly ad campaign. The kid. Yeah. Um, firing things. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I have one. You want, if you want it, <laughs> I'll send you either <laughs> either of you. Uh, you're welcome to my AT and T Fire Phone. It's sitting in my desk drawer. I tried to use it. Yeah, basically, I need to trade phones with my son, so he he gets more. I need to buy a new one. Yeah. Because he's got some two year old Android and that's that's broken. So yeah. I need to get something new, but I'm not sure what to get because everything's like coming out this week, or rather. Everything's being announced this week and not actually on sale yet. Yeah, I mean, I think I the think X1 I'd looks really the, good. The new X, I'm calling it the X1. The new, the 2014 Motorola X really looks nice. That's, I no, think, going to be my know. phone. It's that or the iPhone 5, uh, uh, 6 Plus. It's what, either that, either that, and that. I'm not switching that back to that ecosystem. No way. Uh, 
according according to a, a link to a tech blogger and uh, kind of a not a not known tech blogger tktechnews.com Motorola is planning to release eight new devices before Christmas <laughs> so we haven't even seen everything yet uh, I, I I would I think I'm gonna live in the Motorola X hint Moto 360 world for a little while. I just, I, I feel like that's where, I, you know, I have to decide what and to take to London. I need something that'll work on T-Mobile because T-Mobile has, uh, you know, internet, free international yep. uh, roaming. That's the other attraction of the of the Nexus 5 for me because it, yeah. it, it does that. Yeah. Um, and it works very well. I've, I've used that. But I'm going to, I'm going to London next week as well because ah. it's Christmas it's off to university. So. Fun. Any, oh yeah, that's right. Oh. Boy, they Did start late. Did T-Mobile make its, make its next announcement? Wasn't T-Mobile going to make another John Ledger no, no, was but, saying something. I don't know. He said was, something was going on today, but I haven't seen the reports of it yet. Yeah, the chat room. Anyone yeah, got a got tweet about it? Some reports. Yeah, John said, "Oh, watch." Uh, okay, uh, the Uncarrier 7.0 has now been released. But, but that roaming thing, <laughs> I, you know, I, I was impressed with that. <laughs> oh no. Um, a man spray painting a cloud on a wall. Um, <laughs> the man, I think, is John himself. Um, T-Mobile to cell phones that call and text on Wi-Fi. Well, they've been doing that for ages. In fact, that's one thing yeah. Apple announced was that they were going to support Wi-Fi calling for T-Mobile. Um, right, but that but Android's had that for a few years. The press conference just happened. I, I don't. I'm looking it up. Uh, it must mustn't be big news. Um. <laughs> uh, all right, I think we uh, I think okay, we've kind of mined every all right. What's, what's the like, you know? There's an advantage to what we call in journalism the lead, which is like put the inform the news <laughs> up the front. News at the top. Yep. They're going to support Wi-Fi phone uh, integration as far as thirty thousand feet. Oh, in the sky. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Right. I was going to say, that's well, a really long range Wi-Fi router. So when they say in the clouds, they mean you can actually make... At home. I know, this makes no you sense. You can replace your entire Wi-Fi. That is the recommended approach. You can have it as an additional cell spot if you like. What the hell is this? And serve parts of the home with poor yeah, coverage. Well, that's a, that's a femto a cell. That's something uh, every carrier offers. T-Mobile has right. also made a deal with GoGo. Oh, I get it. To provide customers with free text messaging and voicemail on GoGo-based flights. This is dumb. Forget it. We don't. We don't. We don't care. Okay. But I like T-Mobile. I'm not saying anything bad about T-Mobile. Oh, we like you guys. Because I can. Go, I can take it to London, and get uh, international roaming at 2G speeds. But that's better than nothing. For free. What should I see when I'm in London, Kevin? Anything exciting? Um, well, is there anything there to see? Any sights? Any hot spots? Any tourist attractions? Um. Well, London, theater is the main thing to see in London. Yeah, you know, actually, I want, I was going to go, go see, see something on the West theater. End, and I don't know what to see. The National Theater has this curious incident of the dog in the night, which was my own. I love the novel. Do you know anything about the play? I haven't seen, I don't know much of it, but okay. I should ask my son about this. He's, yeah, he, 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 ask, he's, him, um, ask him if you could buy theater. one ticket to a show in the West End or, or anywhere in London, <laughs> what show should I go see? I will ask him that. But the, 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 uh, the, the, and so Leo, the, would you like to go visit The Guardian? No. Okay, <laughs> it's a newspaper. What am I going to see there? <laughs> well, you could you could maybe do things with them. No, I don't want to do anything. I'm not working. Lisa won't even let us working. do a meetup. There you uh -oh, go. Okay. We are going to the iTunes Festival on Tuesday to see Plácido Domingo. That's it's, cool. Uh, it, that'll so, be so fun. The, so the things the things I recommend in London is theater. There's the various ways to do that. If you go to Leicester Square. Yeah. Um, there's a booth in the middle of it called TKTS yes. that gives you discounted yeah. tickets for that day. Yeah, we have that in um, New York City. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 But, but you know, there's also like 20 other places that will say they're half price tickets but aren't, but that one's actually TK run by the Tickets theater. is. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. do exactly the same thing in Times Square. Yeah. Okay. So I recommend that. Um, and yeah, the musicals tend to be full, but the the, the actual live theater is is usually, there's usually stuff available there. Yeah. Nobody, um, nobody goes to see theater. <laughs> oh, not in London they do. But you and, can and, see any Disney movie on stage. They got them all. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> but, but uh, you know, I recommend actual, actual theater because that's... Yeah. Um, as no, I think the music, curious incident of the dog in the night. Ask that's, ask your son about that. Oh, I'll see what he thinks about that. I think he's, I think he's putting a play on, so but it probably won't be in time oh, for you. That's um, interesting. There's a lot of good student theater as well that I'm finding out through him. The other things that are touristy... Um, 
there are, you know, there's lots of obvious ones. The ones that are sort of subtle and different is if you go to... It won courses, seven Olivier Awards. Is that a good thing? Yes, that's a good okay. thing. I would see that. <laughs> I would go and see that. <laughs> Including best new play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you go to St. Paul's Cathedral or Westminster Abbey, if you go to Choral Evensong there... That's what I'm going to do. A, you don't have to pay to go in, which you do the rest of the time, and B, you actually hear Choral Evensong in, love, in a place that sounds amazing. I love Evensong. So that's, do that do that in both of them. Look up when it's there. Because um, it, yeah. it gets you a feel for why that... Is that every is. evening or is it just uh, one evening a week or... Um, look it up. I think okay. it's every evening in, in, the, in the cathedrals. Um, that I want, that, but that Westminster Abbey, I want to go there and see that. Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's, they both do it. And, oh, and St. Paul's also, okay. They're, but they're both spectacular. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Um, so that's a good thing. What else? The other, you, you can go and attend, I'm not sure if Parliament City, you can go and attend debates in Parliament. Really? Um, yep, just line up outside. Oh, I'd and, love to do that. And you get to watch, watch that, see what's on, and, and go to the, the, the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Um, wow. That's, that's, the, that's a very English thing that you can do that's also free and, um, you know, Sort of traditional and not too tourist. And it depends on what they're debating. It can be interesting. It can be very dull. It can be just them like reading out their constituents' complaints. Yeah. But but it's 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 inter it's it's worth visiting the Parliament building that way. Huh. What else? I hear the uh, good walking walking tours are fun. Yeah. They, yeah. There's the, the the nice thing about London, especially if you get the weather, is that it's a very walkable city. Um, yeah. You you get you it's get sort freezing. of sucked, you get sucked into the tube because the tube connects everywhere. That and, sounds painful. But the thing is, you look at the tube map, you go, oh, I should go there by, by right. going this line and then this line. And if you actually look on the physical map, you go, oh, I can just walk there in <laughs> three seconds. Um, three yeah. minutes. Yeah. And yeah. actually, there's an app that I recommend. We're staying in Mayfair, so we're kind of central, which is nice. Well, so you're fairly central. But yeah. but the thing is that there's London has lots of, yeah, like like many like any real city, it has lots of different neighborhoods that are different bits in. Yeah. Um, so getting a sense of the different neighborhoods is nice. Mayf Mayfair these days can be a bit empty. Because lots of people f from overseas have bought flats that they don't live in. Oh dear! So it, it, there's a certain um, it, it's it's fancy and it's nice and there's some some historic buildings, but there's not a lot of life there compared to other bits of London right. where pe yeah. people actually walk around and live. Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to it. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. And there's a, a, I, I do, uh, so tip tip of the week if, as as we have done. Wait a minute, right, we're going to take a break. So hold your tip okay. of the week. I'll, but it relates to that. I will do that. Okay. It, it, we will have a a traveler's tip of the week. With Kevin Marks coming up in just a little bit. You're Jeff's a number, and I have a tool. Some might say I am a tool. <laughs> Our show brought to you by Shutterstock.com, the best place to go to get stock photos, video footage, illustrations, vectors. It is amazing. Shutterstock has over 40 million. <laughs> it's incredible. I think when we started doing their ads, it was 25 million. Over 40 million stock photos, vectors, videos, even music tracks. For everything, including uh, not just illustrations for your blog, but editorial as well. So if you're doing a story about the iPhone or Wall Street, uh, you, you can find pictures that are appropriate for editorial. You can sign up and get free content every week. Plus use, oh, I love it. The free photo of the week this week is a typewriter. See, if you're a, with a little current with a, flowers on them. If you're, if you're a blogger, Shutterstock is so great. You can get a subscription. We have the 25 image a day subscription. A lot of businesses do that. So we have plenty of images all the time. Royalty-free. They have an incredible app. Won a Webby Award for their iPad app. Now it's on Google uh, as well, on Android as well. Last week, they added 352,000 new images. That means you're pretty much guaranteed to find whatever you're looking for. And the search tool is so good that uh, you, you, know, you need it when you have that many images, 40 million images. So there's London, images of the gherkin. <laughs> is that what they call it, the gherkin? They do. <laughs> and uh, what's the other building that has a has a name? Um, the Sliver? Well, the I mean, there's the Shard, which... Was the, the Shard. The same, there's, there's the walkie-talkie, which is... <laughs> Every building has a name. Not such a complimentary name. But So you say London, but then I can narrow it down. Look at, uh, I can refine the search. So I can have photos, vectors, or illustrations. I can say or, or, horizontal or vertical. Uh, I can say I can have uh, different categories... I can exclude keywords. I can say only images with people, only images without people. I can have more people options. Any gender, age, ethnicity. I mean, you can drill down here. By the way, if you sign in uh, now, and you don't need a credit card to do that, 
You can get free images, as I mentioned, but you can also do the light box, which means you can save images, share them with people. It's great for inspiration. And if you decide to buy, we've got a great deal, 20% off all image subscription packages. That's a huge deal. In order to do that, you've got to use the offer code TWIG914. So visit Shutterstock, create that free account. You don't need to give them a credit card to do that. If you decide to buy, though, use the offer code TWIG914, and you'll get 20% off your image subscription packages. That's a really good deal. Shutterstock.com, it's our bit to beautify the web. Always royalty-free. Uh, normally, Gina would start with a tip. We'll let Kevin Marks give us a tip, and it doesn't have to be a Google tip. Well, it's a it's an it's an app tip, which is um, City Mapper. I got it. <clears throat> so this is um, it, it's particularly good in London. They've they've just added San Francisco um, and Bay Area, but it's particularly good in London because London has um, a bunch of ways of getting around. It, it solves that actual problem I just told you of. Okay, I'm here. I want to get right. there. Which tube line should I take? Or should I walk? Or should I get one of those city bikes? Or you know, how do I how do I get around? Um, and it does it in a in a more um, in a better user interface than Google Maps does. It's um, so. Uh, so it's get me somewhere. Get me home. Get me to work. Add places. Meet me somewhere. We'll send a, a text message with. Yes. Uh, and and it, and it shows you uh, buses, tube, uh, bicycle. It, it, yeah, so it'll show you buses, walking, um, cycling. It'll take into Ferries. account. The, the bikes you can rent from the city and tell you where to go so and get great. those. Yeah, so they so, have a city bike rental thing, huh? That's really cool. Yeah. So um, so that's uh, that was, that's my tip for it, particularly for London, because they, they started it there and it's, and it's very good at London. All, all my London friends say, say yes, we sh you should use this. Google Maps is not as good. Um, and and my friends friends who moved to San Francisco from there said, I really miss City Mapper. So yeah. now it's in San Francisco too. That's good. So, oh, and another London travel tip is um, Borough Market. What's that? Um, it's oh, yeah. a food market um, on the south bank of the Thames, just a bit along from the Tate, from the Tate, the new Tate, um, and it's really good. It's if if you're missing your sort of San Francisco gourmetness, go there. All right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have we're staying at Claridge's, so I thought we'd have high tea. Clar Claridge's high tea is very nice. It's, it's like the I'll be, <laughs> I feel like a <laughs> member of the Bloomsbury sounded, group. Uh... Huh? Did that sound I didn't mean to. I'm hoping no, Alan Bennett will nice. stroll in and we can have a nice conversation. Stephen Fry, join us. It'll be such fun. It, well, <laughs> have a scone. He used to hang out in um, um, Regent's, uh, what do you call it? Regent's Park Road, where, where my, my office was in London. He, we would go to, the, go to the cafe and he'd be sitting there chatting to people or something. Right. It was Alan Bennett. So, um, but he's, I'm he's, actually, he's North London ish. I'm a huge Alan Bennett fan. I love his books. Oh, well, see see if he's got if any of his stuff. He on. might have a it's, show, huh? He might have a show on. I'll have to check. Ooh. I didn't even think of that. So funny. Um, former Beyond the Fringer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Along with Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. Jeff Jarvis, a number of the week, my friend. Um, so, I just saw this on Twitter. Thank goodness got solved. We got, got saved by the bell here. Uh, we wonder why does Apple have bigger screens coming out? Well, uh, Flurry has data showing the bigger screens are used more. Of course. Duh. Well, yes and no. You think, oh, the little screen's more convenient. It's harder to get the big thing out. It looks silly. It looks this, it's that. Yeah. But no, people use them more, and that's why you know, they're coming out. So there's some data from... from um, and, of course, uh, Apple tablets. wants you to use them more because the more you use it, the more money they make. Exactly. The happier you are, too. So phablets now account for 11 percent of app ses session usage wow. of all phones. Uh, See, people to... mocked me. I have to. I have to say, because I said early on, I want big. You were. You were. And they were, and they were. said it looks like no. a candy bar next to your head and all sorts of stuff. I never. I got that the note at one point that seemed too big, and this this now seems quite normal. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't understand that objection because if you look at a classic telephone, it's Eight inches long and has a thing that goes to your ear. Well, that's true. That's mouth. big, aren't they? And all yeah, you could do yeah. is talk to it. All you can do is talk to it. Whereas this thing is like, well, I've got this on my ear, but the microphone is somewhere around my cheek. Yeah. yeah. So, it's not big enough. You're right. These should so, be uh, bigger and they should wrap around and they should have a shoulder <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, God, I remember those. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, well, that's not a surprise, and I and uh, it's very interesting because Apple really made a big jump for this. This is an example of Tim Cook saying, "I'm going to do my own thing." Because Steve Jobs, I, it was pretty clear he did not like the idea of a big screen. He could have done it earlier, right? Well, no, they did, but they did it with the, the iPad. That was the thing. They decided right. there were two there were two good sizes, right? Um, and and Steve Jobs made the "fall down your fingers" joke and all that right. stuff. Well, um, they're, and they're still kind of living that in the that. Interesting about this announcement was watching the. Go ahead. Well, the de the design thinking for iOS is still in that world. There are there are yes. small things in your hand that you have to use with one hand with your thumb, and then there are big things that you hold out here and read that are that are iPads. And that mental model of that dichotomy defined the design thinking for iOS, um, such that you build an iPhone app or you build an iPad app, right? Um, but you don't think of it as a continuum. And now they have to think of it as a continuum because there's a continuum of, of sizes in, in the iPhone line. Um, and the other, and the other reason that, that that you needed that split was that this screen was three twenty by four eighty and couldn't really show much. Right. And the other one was a was a full size screen. Right. Whereas now this screen has more pixels than the original iPad does, um, and so thinking about everything in pixel terms makes much less sense um, because you can't you can't see the pixels anymore. Um, so I think we're we're about, we're going to have a transition into people designing in a much more um, vector-based, smooth way, and having things vary depending on how big is the thing, how big is the thing you're holding, and how big is your finger are the two sort of key variables, um, as opposed to is this a specific size, is this an iPad or an iPhone? And to some extent, web design has gone that way already. We've had a lot of responsive design and thinking about um, how do we make this the same site work in different places, and how do we add stuff in for the bigger screens? Um, I think that that will come into its own in the broader design community on iOS as well, where they've been able to say up to now, oh, there are two things. There are phones and there are, there are iPads and they're, they're different and we should do separate things for them. And they realize that there is actually now a continuum of, across there. Um, and that will map to, and that may map to making things work more smoothly across different platforms as well. I, you know, haven't spent that much time thinking about it. I just like to have, I'm old. I want to see bigger pictures on my screen. Yeah. And I yeah. do think using it as a camera, it's going to be great. Now, the, we, Burke has made some mock-ups, and you'll be interested to hear this, Jeff, because you have a OnePlus. This is the five, the uh, 6 Plus is almost identical in size. Right. Yep. Boy, is that a big And it's much thinner. And then uh, we call this the iBurk 6 and the iBurk 6 Plus. Uh, the, I love uh, that half of San Francisco has made cardboard iPhones I know, yesterday. I know. I've seen I, lots of people do this. You know why? Because you're trying to decide, should I get the little one? Should I get the how big, big one? How big is the little one compared to the present iPhone? Oh, God. It's a ba it's not much bigger. It's actually it's, it's, thinner. It's, it's bit, They've got, they made bigger. it thinner. Do you have an iPhone uh, 4S? Oh, actually, John's bringing me one. That's cool. That's an iPhone 5. All right, same size. So I don't know it's a lot bigger. So oh, that's a lot bigger. Yeah, that's the five. Then on top of that, it's the six, and then on top of the, uh, below that yeah, is basically, the six. Basically, the six is like um, Nexus five sized. Yeah. And the and the uh, six plus is um, one plus sized. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, this is the yeah. There's the six on top of the one plus. It, it's almost identical in size to the uh, one plus. That's that's wow. actually encouraging because I really like this and it's got a better camera. It's got uh, optical image stabilization, so I think this would make a great you know way to shoot movies, 4K movies, as you're holding it like that. Oh, I, they, they, had, they had two nice things. They had optical image stabilization and they had um, uh, autofocus at the chip level. Yeah, so phase detection autofocus built into the uh, sensor. That's the as far to my knowledge the only yeah, phone that, that does that. that. that so th those those are both very cool, and yeah. that that combined with it actually having a 1080p screen should mean that you can do some very nice stuff. And also they they said 240 fps. Um, yeah, slow mo, capture. super slow mo. Yeah, at 720p, but still that's still very interesting. <laughs> I'd so, be yeah, happy it sounds with like that a too. really nice camera. Yeah, the uh, you know it's, I have no trouble with the hardware. I don't know if I I'm so spoiled by Android and its customizability that I don't yeah. know if I can go back to that grid of icons. I just don't know if I can live <laughs> with that. <laughs> It's kind of limiting. Yep. So, Kevin, I share your uh, conundrum. What do you buy? What? Right. Okay, I'm not in your position. I my this phone is only about a month old, <laughs> but still, <laughs> I have yeah. to have a buy new phone. So no, my I take, uh, I take that one from you, but well, well, also... I, I can get you an invite. You want an invite? We'll get you an invite. Will somebody tweet Kevin Marks an invite? Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. For, for I'll tell you for th if, okay, if you include the price, the price. 
no, this is a great idea. Yeah, 350 bucks for this. But that's exactly. 64 gigs. Like, now how much would you pay? So uh, my actually, my uh, tip is something for anybody, if, the, the three of you who have one plus one phones. Um, this is actually a really nice case. I don't know if you even noticed I have a case on it. I'm not crazy about that weird texture on the back there, so it's actually nice. This is a clear case. It's eight bucks. Um, it's uh, it's kind of hard, soft rubber, so it'll protect it against drops. It's from Ringke, R-I-N-G-K-E. They call it their fusion case. Fits beautifully. Does not get in the way. I'm able to use the chargers, the earphones without uh, problems, although you'll you'll have to have earphones that have a little bit of a depth to them because it does it's a little thick on the top but uh, i've been very happy with this and, it, and uh, i don't normally carry cases this one's so unobtrusive and invisible that i like it in fact i hope they make one for the uh, iphone 6 plus because this is exactly what i need it's called the one one plus one case it's available from amazon for 7.99 and includes a screen cover which i you know a screen protector which i don't use so because i've been using this one for um the Nexus 5, which is Tech 21, which is very similar. It's like yeah. transparent. Kind of a clear case. But reinforced yeah. at the edges, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> you're carrying a big plate of glass in your pocket. Anything yeah, hits I, the glass, you're screwed. And yes. But if you're lucky enough that it drops on a corner, well, at least it'll protect it anyway. Do we lose your audio, Jeff? All I heard was I. Oh, oh. am I gone? No, oh, now you're Hello? back. Hello? Hello? All right. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> all of a sudden, of all people to do a Verizon commercial, you're the last one I would expect, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis is a professor of journalism at CUNY, the City University of New York. He also is a very prolific writer and speaker. Hey, you know, we never give you a plug for this, but if you want Jeff to speak, do you have a speaker's bureau no. you uh, work with? No, you can just come straight to me. And how would we do that? Just my emails on my blog. Just okay. email me and say, So uh, oh, go to buzzmachine.com. I, I got back from um, IFA Plus. I'm going to Internet World Stockholm in about a week or two. Is there a, is there a typical kind of thing you talk about? Um, it varies. I mean, th this time appropriate to go into Europe, I talked about techno euro panic. So you, you, um, uh, you like me, and this is why I stopped speaking, tailor your speech to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. That was too much work. What I, I enjoy just... most, we didn't do this before, what I enjoy most is the discussion in the room. Yeah, me too. But that seems like you shouldn't take money for doing that. And I take a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere unless you pay me. Um, and Princess of the P, business class, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's got to be business class, right? I do that. Thank you, JJ. Thank you. Kevin Marks, thank you for the indie web. Honestly, I really, uh, and, and for bringing uh, Ben and Aaron by, and I'm just. They're great. I really think this is the way it ought to be. That's well. That's the hope. It's, it's, it's you know, and it's not just me. It's a, it's a large group of us who are building, building this. It's yeah. Um, so yeah. If, okay, if you want to get me to come and talk, I'm sure I'm cheaper than Jeff. So KevinMarks.com. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, there you go. These boy, wouldn't these both of these guys be great speakers at your next event? You bet. Yeah. There we Fabulous. Go. Don't ask me. I don't speak. IndieWebCamp.com. Uh, if you want to know more about the indie web and of course kevinmarks.com uh, is that Ephaeus epigony or is, or have you abandoned that crazy blog um that's still there um but it's linked from from it's linked from kevinmarks.com and i these days i cross post Ephesus. epeus.blogspot.com epeus that's it ephesus is a uh, is a ephesus famous is a ruin <laughs> yes which i've oh, been to um, Epeus was the guy who built the Trojan horse, and I thought that was a cool ah. name 12 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows what the hell it is. But we it think, because you have a show. classical education as a Canterbrugian. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I've learned to use Wikipedia to look at things up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Wikipedia. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We do this week in Google, and, and I have to say I love this show. It's so much fun. And it is very, uh, as you could tell, wide-ranging. If you you got to be open to the idea that we're going to talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about. But if you feel like that's the show for you, join us Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 2000 UTC on twit.tv. You can watch live at live.twit.tv or download on-demand audio and video. Always is available after the fact and all the previous shows, too, at twit.tv slash twig or wherever you get netcasts, including iTunes and the podcast apps. There's even uh, third-party Twit apps on every platform. Uh, very good ways to watch. You can watch on Roku even and all that. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.
on Twig. Bye.